uh, Dan is uh, a colleague. Uh, we we uh, we participated in this year long um, leadership course called Team Management and Leadership Program. Um, it just ended um, was it two weekends ago. Um, and uh, yeah, we got a lot out of it. At least I did. And um, I'll share my screen. I'm not sure if you guys have already seen this. Have you already seen this? I never showed them your interpossibility. Wendy, I showed Wendy it. Okay, great. So I will share. Okay, so let's go to the. Um, so this is a project, you know, through this program that we took. Um, is just being able to kind of create from nothing, right? Um, you know, what what really. I wanted to do is bring my full self. So bringing in my like data background, my kind of love for creating um, websites, um, this passion for storytelling to create, um, uh, you know, spaces for people to see how interconnected we are. Um, so I created this website to, to kind of achieve all those things. Um, and just to kind of share inner possibility a bit, um, inner possibility, so this was something I came up with actually in the summer of 2020, when you know things were, uh, we had the Black Lives Matter movement or summer. Uh, you know, I was back home in Georgia where I grew up with my siblings. Um, you know, because we're also in uh, you know a pandemic as well, couldn't really hang in New York. Um, and I wanted to do something. Oh, we had a big election that year as well. Um, so my way of doing something was. Um, creating um, a website where I would um, sell hats and those hats were um, kind of a play on make America great again, but it was purple um, and it read make America love now. And I use um, the uh, revenue generated from selling those hats to donate to various causes like um, uh, sunrise movement, um, there was some other uh, initiatives that I'm blanking on, but uh, oh yeah, Campaign Zero, some other ones. Yep. Um, yep. Did someone say something? I have a question. Okay. Um, so yeah, the idea around and back then it was called Love Now, um, uh, and Love Now, it, you know, still has the same tenets as what the name is called now, Inner Possibility, um, and those tenets are we are interconnected, you know, we affect each other. Um, through our actions and inactions, whether we know it or not. Um, we are whole and complete. Um, and I'll read what we have here. We each deal with insecurities, fear, and shame. And we each are motivated by what we believe to be good and right. Um, so that, you know, what I mean by that is like we have, um, you know, our, our, our light side. And then there's also just like this kind of, um, I'm going to call it dark, you know, we have our shame, we have our issues there, you know, that we, we um, insecurities, like we, that's, and, and rejecting that, at least from my personal kind of journey, um, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of like being more um, accepting of my full self, right? And I'm wondering if everyone were able to do that, what would the world look like? So, so given that we're interconnected, given that we're all whole and complete, we have this powerful choice to choose, um, to take care of ourselves. And what I mean by that is, is um, you know, promote our collective flourishing. Um, and that could look, um, you know, uh, like different, uh, that could look, you know, that could go many different ways, you know, when it comes to all of like our, um, I'm gonna not call them problems, but opportunities when it comes to just like climate change, um, you know, how we take care of each other, you know, we're dealing with, um, you know, we're, we're hopefully weaning ourselves off from the pandemic. Um, we are um, dealing with, you know, gun control, all of the issues, at least in America, you know, we, what would it look like if we just like, you know, be present to these, these two initial tenants? And I have it that we can make a powerful choice together. Um, okay, so that's the, the concept. Now, uh, going back, to this game, I'm gonna call it a game. I've been calling it a game. Um, you know, I had folks um, complete a form essentially. Um, and 
you know, that forum is here embedded into this, uh, this particular page. Um, and it, I'll, I'll let everyone actually, uh, you know, uh, um, complete in silo. Um, I'll send the, share the link. Um, but at the end here, the end result is, you know, I've created these two visualizations here. So it's like a global um, uh, map where you can see participants um, who uh, uh, have uh, played this game and where they are in the world. And then these uh, kind of links are to like the participant and um, who referred them to play this game. So that's all captured through this form, completing this form takes six minutes. Um, and then here's another visualization. Um, so these are again, all the participants who have played. Um, and if you hover over folks, you can see who they are in the world. So again, I don't wanna spoil it, um, but if you do um, you know, play this game, it's just another, op it's an opportunity to define oneself um, in a different way. So for me, you can see me at the center here. Uh, I'm, I think I mentioned this, fully self-express, inspiring and fun. Um, and I'm based in Brooklyn. Um, I guess I'll Stacy. There's Stacy here. Uh, honest, loving and joyful from Nyack, United States. Um, you can see Dan, you know, is uh, uh, for, uh, pulling off of Stacy, and you see how Dan's connected to me. Dan is generous, loving, and committed. And all the people who participated from Dan, I love that. And then we have Wendy. Wendy, I think, is on the call. And then we have Parmjit. Non so Wendy, you are creative, wise, and compassionate from South Salem. Parmjit, I don't know, non-judgmental, affirming, and fun. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so yeah, so this is fun. It was just a fun project, and I wanted to, uh, you know, I, I have to say, like, sometimes we get, I was like busy, and you know, it costs money to kind of, you know, um, pay for this form um, to be like live. Um, so I discontinued it, and then Stacy, um, you know, we, I I met Stacy, and she said, and somehow found <laughs> all of like the backstory that I shared with you, um, you know through just Google searching um, and, um, you know, was really enrolled by this project. So I actually resurrected it um, and um, we'll continue to keep it live. Um, and the next goal is to automate it. I would love to just like have someone complete this and then autom and have the four of uh, these visualizations automatically updated. Um, so that's the next step now that I have a little bit more time. So yeah, that's, that is what I'm up to here. Any questions, concerns, comments? Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. I will. Yeah, Kalaji, sharing. I found the I found filling out the questionnaire really lovely too. It's been a little bit since I filled it out, but it inspired me enough that I shared it with other people. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm some of us on this call have been working on different mapping projects. Um, and one that I'm working on, I call the tapestry, but it really, to me, it's not about how we visualize it, although visualizing it is fun and tells the story as you were saying so, so well. To me, it's about letting ourselves be seen, right? It's about, it's not what visual we use. It's like any visual is good at just helping the unseen be seen. And I like the way that you phrase the questions to bring out things that are um, less typically the things we ask each other when we need each other. And I really liked that too. So I think if I had a question, it would be, what are you hoping to do with this? If you had a vision for what, you know, besides creating just the change that comes with seeing each other, there's a lot great richness right there, but are you, do you have a hope or that the ripple effect will eventually do something or I have lots of thoughts about that from my own stuff. So I was just curious whether you had the same. Yeah. Um, you know, Ideally, I want to honestly just see it grow and have it um, grow organically and autom automatically. Um, so if I allow people to play this game, it's easy for them to participate. It's easy to update the, this um, particular, the visualizations, that will be a huge achievement. From there, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think, you know, I'm thinking about like 
brand, you know, I'm thinking about like this inner possibility in the idea as like um, something I can just, you know, apply in different areas, whether it's through just like clothing, whether it's through just, um, you know, more like one thing I actually have been dreaming about is like having um, kind of similar to like um, clothing houses that have like their uh, seasonal, um, I guess, like drops. What I would do is like have a seasonal like drop of content or some sort of storytelling um, uh, uh, content that I would just um, release, uh, you know, maybe like uh, twice a year. So it could be in any form. You could think of like um, something like this, just like interactive. Um, maybe it's like a short film. Um, again, that kind of promotes the idea around inner possibility. Um, and then couple that with like um, merchandise and just again, ways to kind of like grow the idea. Um, and then uh, I, we've, I, with my team, when I was creating this, we, were, we had dreams of having this be like um, a physical exhibit at a museum as well. Um, you know, things like that. So just kind of like growing the idea in, in any way that like, those are some of the, the ideas that have like come to me. All right, um, I will stop sharing. I can tell everybody's looking at your site and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with these intense faces <laughs> yeah <let laughs> they're me... filling it out or they're I think I'm the only one who's filled it out before besides Stacy so I can tell they're all okay yeah let involved. me show you guys are playing yeah oh, thanks okay. thanks for sharing this culture. I um I like how the form is not just about like answering the question but then you kind of make people go back this isn't a spoiler but you kind of make people go back afterwards and reflect on their answers there's like a little bit of um yeah like the form kind of changes you a little bit <laughs> or at least yeah. the way you your answer I yeah like that. yeah that was, it was a fun like kind of um how can I create what feels like an in-person conversation like a one-on-one -on -one conversation virtually was like something mm -hmm. I wanted to to solve for. so type form was like the best tool to kind of the closest tool to achieve that easily Cool, cool. And the tool you're using for the visualizations is uh, Flourish, right? For both yes. of them? Mm -hmm. cool. Exactly. Flourish. So yeah, I, I don't think it should be too hard to automate from Typeform to Flourish, because I know Flourish has a, um, a pretty good API that you could um, update information after a form is submitted. And maybe you could use Zapier for that um, mm -hmm. as like a first step. I'm not sure. Yeah. If you familiar with Zapier if you've tried mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I I didn't see a, what do we call it within Zapier, like an integration. Um, let's see. I guess like, could you ping a generic API? Yeah, so basically, um, and this is actually just good information for anyone who's like trying to do some automations. Um, if Zapier doesn't have an integration with, you know, for example, like Flourish, um, what you could do is there is a, um, a step, um, which is, I believe, just like do a post request or do a get request. Like you can just do, a, I'll tell you what it's called exactly. I should just sign in. Um, but you can basically do, you could define your own API call with any, um, any software and it doesn't have to be like integrated in Zapier. You can do the same thing with um, inter Integromat, which I think just changed their name to something else. They're a little cheaper. Um, Pete, do you know what they changed their name to? I do not. That's news to me, actually. Make, looks like. What uh, is it? Make. Oh, yeah. OK, I think that's it. Amazing. Mm 
So you're new to this group, Kalachi, but this is a very conversational group. So I can tell that everyone's really dived into your thing because of the, of the looks on everyone's faces and the intensity. It's cool. Take a look at the back and see what people are thinking. I'm grappling the fact with the fact that I created, started creating start answering the questions and hit the back button at one point and I think I'm gone. <laughs> I'm, back, I'm back to the lead page and I, so I don't know if I'm double creating a profile and there'll be two of me or if it doesn't. I think you should be again. good. I think you should be good. I, um, I think the cookie should should get, bring you back to um, where you left off. Let me know if that's not true. Yeah. It. I mean, the cookies aren't bringing me back to where I left off. It's starting me at the beginning, but, um, but no, I'll just start again. Okay. <laughs> what were you just thinking, Wendy? Yeah, I, I had a question for Kachi, but he looks like he's in the middle of something. So, so oh, no, ask away, ask away. Okay, okay. So I'm curious if, like, um, what kind of time you're spending? Like, is this taking, is this just kind of one of those projects that's kind of off on the side for you and you're just curious about it and put some time in every now and then? Or is it something that you're looking to expand right now? Or is it, I'm wondering if, like, what you, what you might need from this group, which is, maybe a hard thing for you to frame because you don't know us very well, but I'm kind of wondering how we can help support your work and whether there's some synergies and opportunities for weaving our efforts together. Yeah. If you, if you want me to describe open. what we're, you know, what I'm working on and have some other people do that first, we can also do that, but I was just curious. That would be great. That'd be great because yeah, I'm coming from a place of this has been kind of like a side thing and I want to see it grow. And I think, um, it's, I just have a feeling that um, this group is itching to kind of take this or like a combination of a lot of things to a level that I am not present to. And I'm excited to, to learn more. Yeah, I'd really love you all to explain what you're doing because that's really why I wanted Kalechi to come here because I think he can see something that I won't be able to explain. So I really want you all to know each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can start. I think other people might still be filling out forms. Um, I can start. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell a story rather than talk about the specific projects, because to me, it's not so much about the projects as it is like where we're all trying to go. So I tend to be a person who's a mirror. My background is in psychology, actually, not in tech or coding or anything like that. I just recognize that tech has a big role to play in where we're trying to go. So for me, um, whether I'm trying to be a mirror for people to see themselves better by have, you know, sitting down and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, or whether I'm trying to provide, a, um, encourage a, some, something from a tech perspective to be built, to me, it's doing the same thing. It's providing a mirror, right? Either a mirror to community, right? So the data visualization matters greatly right from that perspective, which I'm sure can see you nodding, I'm sure you appreciate too. So for me, the UI UX stuff is more, again, I don't code, I'm not a UI, UX designer, but I appreciate that. So I tend to be a weaver, right? So I'm looking for all the pieces to put together, um, whether it's the tech pieces or it's the community pieces or the facilitation pieces or the, I'm, I'm usually thinking in those ways and trying to provide you know, a Miro board or a document or something to help people see what I'm visualizing from that perspective and to throw it into the center and to the soup to see what, see what happens and see how it changes conversation and things like that. In that, I'm also tends to be a systems person where I'm, I'm often seeing the holes in things because I'm trying to take that view. So if I see a hole and I see if filling that hole would help, I try to fill it you know, either by connecting people together or by filling it myself so that the entire system can rise together. So I, I'm often looking for that aspect in the visualizations as well. And seeing that one of the things that was really missing um, was for me, 
a way for community to two aspects that are missing in data visualizations from my perspective, mostly as a, as a user of the of the information. One is I need to edit my own information. So if you're presenting me a not you specifically, but if I get a data visualization and I can't interact with it in a way or and edit it or move it or shape it in a way that speaks then speaks to me, then to me it feels more like a one shot view of something, I get that story and then I move on. And I was looking for something that was be more interactive and engaging um, so that people felt like they wanted to come back to it, that it kept informing them. And then the other thing was giving a holistic view of a community so that the leaders could see where synergies are. Well, actually, so individuals could too, see where the synergies are and see where the gaps are, right? So it's a lot to ask of technology the way it's built now. Um, to be able to have kind of a global view of things and my own personal view of things and to be able to, to add notes and edit things the way I want to, you know, it's, it becomes more than just the visualization. It becomes a whole knowledge repository. It becomes, right. So it starts expanding and expanding. So I've tried to take little bite side pieces, bite sized pieces of it. See, well, can we just create like this little piece of it, which is hard because the second I feel like I've shown things to people, they go, well, that's really nice, but could we have like this huge thing? You know, it's hard to take a bite-sized piece that that um, actually help, that works the way we want it to work technically, but also helps and supports the ultimate goals at the same time. It always feels like it's lacking just a little bit, like, like the tools that we need right now to create the tools that we need. <laughs> like we need the tools to create the tools. Um, so I'm, I'm stuck in that a little bit in that little place. Um, I work, I come to this group because not only do I really love the people in this, in this meeting, and I've always appreciated our conversations and, um, it's such a nice community, but we talk here about how that are diff the different things that we're working on can work together better, um, and how we can, um, use the data or use the concepts to, to help each other, support each other. And, um, then on the technical side, which is less me, but more more of the other people in this group, it's also about the technical interoperabilities of things as well. So um, I, I currently have a project running called Tapestry for me. I'm trying to really get simplified with it now and go, okay, if I use it for me, what do I really want it for? And right now I'm trying to weave a bunch of projects together from people that I know, and I'm seeing how they fit together and I am keep trying to find ways to express that really well so that other people see what I see and I'm, I'm struggling. And so I'm trying to use my own tool, I've developed my own tool to a point where things that feel like they're, they're at the fringe edges start to realize that they're actually connected. I hope that made sense. <laughs> Can you give me an example of that? Like, um, yeah, if you if you don't mind, if you have like details yeah. of like those those like different the fringes, fringes yeah. yeah. Okay, so someone over here is working on hollow chains. Someone over here is working on trail marks, right? How do we help them understand that even though they might have walked slightly different paths, they're actually ending up in a very similar place? And how and how do we help those two people find the synergies there? and then develop a project from that. And then hopefully funding comes after that. So, but it starts with the awareness that these two people don't know each other yet, but they're in similar circles, right? They're already connected in some ways. And how do we help them recognize that they're actually working on, in, on something similar? Now it's obviously up to them where they decide to collaborate or not, right? It's not about that. It's really just bringing the awareness more quickly because of course that'll happen over time. They could meet, they could talk. I'm trying to have tech help us create the see the synergies more quickly now if they're actually just working on two parallel things and they need to keep running parallel fine like this, this isn't about forcing anything right it's simply about finding the potential overlaps um, i know one person over here that's working on governance another person over here that's working on governance another person over here that's working on governance one's got a slightly legal bent one's got a slightly economic bent one's got a slightly slightly financial bent. How do we, are they working on the same thing, not working on the same thing? Do I invite them to meet each other? Do I not invite, right? If they, if I could have something in tech that would, they could fill out, no one wants to fill out an, yet another profile, right? But if it's something that they could fill out something simply and then maybe come back to and add on to over time, then I would imagine they would start to find each other better. This is, I, I, ha, I haven't seen anything technologically, you know, designed that helps with that step. 
right? It wants to capture all my data, but it's not really helping make those overlapping synergies or even better yet, sometimes highlighting the gaps and things. If I'm, a, if I'm running a community, I wanna know not only who's in my community and what maybe next step I should take as a community. Should I have a meeting about governance? Because I just learned that like half my community is actually connected to government governance in some way. Then maybe we should have, hold a summit. But also just as important as we have no artists and we have no, you know, nobody from a spiritual side or nobody from the indigenous side. And maybe it would be wise to invite those people to a different, another kind of meeting, right? So it's both as the leader. So I see it both on an individual level and on a leader level, and then even, you know, and then scaling it obviously is a whole nother perspective, but did that help? It did. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so I could see a project like you, the the gift that you have in using technology to to feel more welcoming, to feel more human. Not that it'll ever replace. I don't think anybody here thinks that technology is meant to replace creativity or create, right? But that, but to help us get just a little further down, it does. It, it that does right. Technology can do that. We don't want to make technology more than it is. But I think it, if if technology was designed for people, not for sales, right? If technology was designed for um, efficiencies of of connection, then I think we would we would be able to use it for more than we're using it for now and feel much more satisfied with the results. So I, I, that's the piece that I feel like I can see an interpossibility that is already emerging, that is, that is super important in this realm of how do we use tech to help connect people. I got it. Yeah. I, again, I was thankful. Uh, yes, thank you for sharing because I'm present to you. Um, this kind of the goal that you're getting at, right, is to like, again, not for just like profit seeking, it's more of like, no, we want to just connect people who are moving in similar directions so that we can create efficiencies to get to where we need to go. Wow, which is like, kind of what inner possibility is like, like collective flourishing. Ah, cool. I'm present. Yes, and that's where it started for me was flourishing. So my my driving question is why aren't we all already thriving? Because we have what we need, but we're not using the resources well, or we're not capitalizing on people's strengths. Resources being very broad broad definition, right? We're not using people's strengths in the right places at the right times, right? We're not allowing people's brilliance to rise up who maybe don't have marketing degrees, right? So they don't, right? So how do we how do we bring all that? how a given opportunity to bring all that stuff to the fore and technology hasn't been designed to do that, but what if, what if it was? Mark Antoine, can I ask you to introduce yourself? I'm gonna ask you all, cause I wanna hear it. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm, I did go through the process. And what I'm interested in is alignment, not so much what Wendy was describing, though I guess that's absolutely part of it, but the alignment of vision, alignment of understanding. Um, and so I'm very, I'm a bit mindy, so I'm interested in the uh, representation of viewpoints and uh, worldviews uh, so that we can start comparing those worldviews. Um, the, I was thinking about, and so I worked on a, a few collective intelligence tools. Uh, Idealum uh, is an old tool, Sensecraft is a new tool, and Hyperknowledge is a kind of background research project for all of this. Um, and yeah, the, the big question for me is good data representation for expressing the plurality of viewpoints. Uh, other than that, <laughs> uh, what else to say? Um, other than this work aspect, I'm trying to sometimes remember that I'm a Buddhist and to meditate. And uh, <laughs> that's, I live in Montreal and uh, that's most of what I have to say. In terms of, um, 
what you're saying about finding these gaps between projects, Wendy, I, I would ask you, what is it you don't expect to be able to do on the Catalyst? So let me or maybe clarify should... that question. Your question is, where is Catalyst limited for me? Is that what you mean? Like, what is Catalyst yeah. not doing? Yeah, for that goal. But maybe I should let other the presentation round finish. But I'd really like to throw this question at you. Yeah, so let me, I'll answer quickly. And then for me, it's seeing the connections between things, okay. right? Is right. So Vincent's okay. troves are fabulous, and but it's hard to visualize all the connections. You know, so it's almost like Kumu on top, or seriously on top, or right. Like it's, that's the piece. Okay. That okay. Yeah. Vincent, do you want to go? Um. Actually, I need to go check on my grammar real quick. So you guys can circle back to me. I'll be right back. Michael P. <laughs> Pete. I'm, I'm waiting for Michael to jump in. <laughs> um, uh, hi, Kalechi. It's nice to meet you. You're doing cool stuff. Um, so Stacey, what, what's this game again? What's what game? <laughs> um, this game that I'm asking, I'm asking you to introduce yourself. Well, so I can play that a bunch of different ways, right? And, and you probably you don't. <laughs> um, I was embarrassed how ugly my tech looks, basically, looking at Kalechi's. So I had to find some tech that, or it's, I, I had to find some some artistic stuff. So let me show you some artistic stuff that I haven't shown people much. Pete's an overachiever. I'm just gonna throw that in here. I think <laughs> this is. I'm finding this so interesting that everyone's feeling shy. This is so, kind of cute. <laughs> so uh, this, I I had to find this and say, yeah, I've actually got a, a decent eye for art, and I like making art and stuff like that. The, so the, the funny thing is, I, I like colors and patterns and stuff like that. So a lot of these things make me, they, they just make me happy just looking at them. I but love then, these. Um, thank you, that? Pete. <laughs> um, I love these. I was saying thank you for showing this. You're welcome. Um, so so then um, then I take, took a second look and it was like, uh, there's, I, there's a whole nother thing. I've been playing around with the AI, um, the AI uh, image generator tools, and I've I've curated like so. You don't create stuff with with AI art generators. You curate stuff. Um, so the generators I've played with, basically, you you poke around with them with simple words um, for like dozens of times, and so out of a hundred things, you find one or two that are like, oh wow, I could share this, and it looks interesting, or or you can take it apart a little bit and put it back together in a slightly different way. So so then I was looking at these and go, damn, so these are from like 15 or 20 years ago. Damn, the, what this basically is, uh, I can look at these and know how they were created and stuff. A lot of it is just curation. Um, uh, combinations of uh, palettes and uh, geometric uh, transformations and stuff, and it's it's curation. So, so Kalechi, one of the things I'm really good at is curating and editorial, editorial decision making. Um, and that's a lot of what this is. Um, so, so then I'm like, isn't there anything that I actually made by hand? And, and this is a really interesting explanation of uh, how to brighten, brighten up a an image in Photoshop and with some different layers and and the tricks that you use to get a nice balanced thing. But I actually, this is my grandmother. Um, so again, this is something where I'm more curating than creating. So this is a, it's colorized from a black and white photo and, and cleaned up a lot and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, um, uh, so, um, uh oh actually so let me show you the ugly stuff <laughs> um uh this is a good example so um 
so I've got a project called uh, Massive Massive Wiki, um, and so a lot of what I do is I um, try to help people connect to each other and work together. Um, so a lot of that work in my life has been working on wikis, and this is I uh, I've got a project called um, Massive Wiki, uh, which um, uh, it's it's a, the idea to provide classic wiki utility with uh, various tools and processes that uh, enable decentralization and federation. So um, so the good news is massive wiki is actually really cool, and the bad news is the this is the prettiest prettiest look that it has right now, which is it's totally fine, but it's not great or anything like that. Um, Architecturally, it's it's a uh, sweet. Um, so uh, if you if you appreciate architecture, there's a lot of cool stuff about it. So the things um, uh, um, I've been doing it for a long. I, I've been I've been in tech for since like 19, 1980 or so. So I've been doing a bunch of stuff, lots of different stuff, kind of echoing the same thing. I help people communicate. I help people collaborate. I help people find each other. Um, I, uh, I've actually got a, a really strong line of narrative and story running through my, weaving through all of that. So I think narrative and story are really important. And, and the only, like, for instance, the only way that people, uh, people communicate is within stories. And, and that's the only way they understand stuff too. So you kind of need to squash things down into a story before it makes sense to anybody. Um, or you can let them kind of discover a story around an artifact or something like that. But then you get interesting emergent things, but not communication. Um, so um, so wikis is a big part of that. Uh, helping people use tech is a big part of it. Um, uh, I've, I've, I'm good at tech, and a lot of people are good at at making the world better, and that that doesn't always overlap. So I like to find people who, not so much, not so much. Uh, I I actually like to look for people who are are underserved by by tech um, and who want to do something, and I try to help them do what they think is most important. Um, so the way I say that is not people who are making the world better, but uh, people of good intent. So I, I like to help people of good intent do the thing that they think is really important. Um, so most recently uh, with this network of folks and then a bunch of interlocking networks that are larger than that, uh, the thing that I've been trying really hard to work on is um, uh, decentralization and federation. So helping people work together at scale without being very tightly bound to each other. Um, so uh, one of the projects that's that is in this internetwork of networks is uh, called uh, the Meta Project. Um, and um, I would have to say that this has been kind of a hard week. <laughs> So part of the reason I'm, I'm always a little bit quiet and shy, um, but part of the reason I'm a little bit quiet and shy today is because it's been a hard week, uh, especially with Meta Project. And I don't mean hard like um, bad, I mean hard like a lot of work um, and not a, lot of, not a lot of feeling of reward yet. Um, uh, there's another Wendy in our group, Wendy Elford, uh, and she and I spent a lot of time together. So yesterday we were together for four hours on one of our regular work work sessions. Um, we had about an hour of work to do, I think, and we did about half an hour of it. And so I have homework today. Um, the other three and a half was working through like kind of a pretty minor detail about how people work together. So Meta Project right now is um it's in bootstrap mode and we're kind of trying to bootstrap at at a couple levels of hierarchy and scale at the same time and and it's really confusing for everybody and everybody's frustrated by it um and the the a main frustrating thank god this is uh recorded one of my homework things for wendy alford is is to have uh, some short stories um, for her so that she can, the rest of you will understand this. So she's collecting up stories from a few of us so that she can sense makerize them or uh, Lexi them into 
um, a visualization of, see, here's what we're talking about and why everybody's frustrated. Uh, Wendy Elford's a, a wizard at doing that. Um, so, um, so this, what I just went through, parts of it are a story that I can grab from the, the transcript or something and give to her, thank God, because it's a hard, hard uh, homework project for me. Um, anyway, um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm kind of in a double mind um, frustration. I, 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 this is, well, I feel a little bit weird having this on, on a recording, but whatever. Um, is it, I have it because it doesn't actually really matter. I have a, like a personal frustration that doesn't really matter in the large scale. So usually I just don't talk about those much. Um, but uh, I have this double bind frustration because one of my, whatever the actions and avatar takes are called, I don't know how you would say that, but one of, one of the things that I do for this community is run communication systems. <laughs> um, and Wendy, uh, Wendy and I both finally ended up kind of like being able to talk about the same problems in a language we both co-understood yesterday after like an hour and a half or two hours. And um, I said, it's kind of like we're trying to fit, I was talking about the meeting, the Meta Project meeting this, this week. We're trying to fit uh, 15 pounds of, of stuff into a 10 pound sack. Um, and, and really we had 25 pounds of stuff that we had to fit somewhere and we just threw away 10 of it, but then we still had this problem where, and she said, that's a great metaphor, Pete. And, and what happens when you try to fit, fit 15 pounds of stuff in a 10 pound sack is that it leaks out everywhere kind of so i'm trying to trying to help shepherd everybody into uh, a very small number of communication channels ideally kind of one um and it's kind of exploded all over the place and there's little conversations happening everywhere and um which is fine i think actually there should be uh, conversations everywhere, but we're having conversations that need to be in shared space, in unshared spaces. Um, so I, I love that people have conversations outside, outside the shared spaces, but only the conversations that need to be outside the shared spaces and the ones that need to be. So we, we can't fit it into the 10 pound sack. Um, and everybody's frustrated about that. And, and so all the stuff spilled out and no, and, and we can't even put it back. Right. And I guess, you know, I said, you know, this, we can make the sack bigger in certain ways and we could put it back in, but it's too messy. It's all over the place and stuff like that. So that's, um, that's this week for me. Um, Flotilla, well, welcome to Flotilla. Flotilla, we work on, um, the, the original conceit was to work on, um, tools for connectors. Um, and part of that is uh, directories. Part of that is is uh, I I like a word called matchmakers and matchmaking. Um, so one of the ways that people get connected, I think, is by humans being parts of different networks and saying, "Hey, you should just like Stacy did, right? For you, hey, you should, and just like you're doing with uh, the visualization that you've got, hey, you should know this person, right? And you should know that person. So I I really like that. Um, and that's kind of in the DNA of Flotilla. Uh, the other, another big part of the DNA of Flotilla is um, uh, blending people and technology, and then and then making sure that the technology um, isn't single community, single tech. Uh, it's actually um, can fit together with many other kinds of technologies uh, that are trying to do similar things for you know different different networks and things like that. So, so this is maybe a good home for you. Uh, yeah, thanks. I think so thank you, Pete. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, just what I got there is um, uh, doing hard things <laughs> could be frustrating, um, and. But yeah, kind of like um, finding the essence, right, of like what we're trying to do. And I, I'm kind of teasing that through everyone's share. Um, and uh, what I'm getting is, can we, and with like my project, right, is like, could we define people through like their 
their essence in a way of like who they are as maybe a, like as a possibility and then like have that a way capture that you know and and have that a, uh, as as a way to kind of um connect people you know i I, think I like that and i've i've also kind of got from from my background or my my bent or whatever my my expectation is that the way that that works best is to have uh, a platform a space however you want to call it where people can express themselves but then for the the essence essentially to be recognized by other people and by by matchmakers um so um i'm big on um I'm, I'm big on saying that i think the tools help you help help different humans remember what's special about people um help remember what's special about me help remember what's special about you and help re remember what's special about her but that the actual like the so you can so that the the representation of the the essence is, is actually in other people's heads and the tools just help you remember that and articulate it and stuff like that but the the essence part is actually uh, an emergent property of other people seeing you and thinking about you and and loving you and stuff like that so then the way that you know the way that works together with people is that um you say hey i love this person i think you'll love this person um and that's the that's the the, the matchmaking part that's the connection part that's how you can actually get the essences shown visible that's beautiful. Michael, I think you're up. Well, hello. Um, I'm, I'm not only inspired by what you were doing, Kalechi, but it's, it's great to hear um, Wendy and Pete and Marc Antoine, you know, reintroduce themselves. And uh, so, you know, I've, I've been seeing them for a long time, but there's a lot, there's a lot I'm getting out of, of what they're saying. Um, and there's a lot that overlaps with where I'm coming from. Um, my, my background um, is in, in media making. Um, I spent sort of like have three, three phases to my professional life. Um, and, you know, if you take it pre-professional, there's just like sort of being uh, what I thought was um, an activist when I was like a little kid in Berkeley, California. Um, and uh, and then, you know, wanting to move into some way to express that and help other people express that, which meant getting into publishing, sort of stumbling into it. Um, and out of that, I think one of the things that's really important to me is helping other people effectively communicate what they have to say. I've spent a lot of time, you know, framing other people's messages um, organizing their information, coming up with signage and ways to help them, you know, help them be seen and, and expressed. And usually it's the, the writer, the photographer, the illustrator who I'm like presenting is the person whose message is important. And my importance is is making sure that comes through, not you know, layering my message on top of that or obscuring it in any way. Um, and like out of a long career in, in, in magazine making, um, I sort of moved into the, the digital expression of those kind of legacy businesses and you know, worked on, okay, how is, you know, whether it was at you know, Time Inc. or Hearst or you know, this publication or that, you know, how, how, is, how is this publication going to manifest itself in 
digital space. And it was incredibly frustrating because it was hard to get those businesses to see that they needed to, um, to just look at what they were doing and what their purpose was in different ways than, oh, we make this, how does that thing express itself in a digital way? Like, let's take these articles that we have and put them on the World Wide Web, as opposed to this is who we are, how do we be in this new space that might have nothing to do with articles? It's like if we came up with the idea of being time, you know, what would time be if it wasn't already a magazine and it was existing in digital space, which might be something completely different. Um, and out of, out of that frustration, um, I got into what I'm doing now uh, professionally, still do a little consulting, but um, it's a platform called, called Factor, um, which I could show and tell a little bit, but I, I'll save that. Um, and it's a, uh, thanks Pete, <laughs> I was just about to do that. Um, uh, and actually, uh, if you are logging into that, it's, I think at the moment, working with uh, Google OAuth and not working with, uh, with just email. So, uh, so I have to double check. Some, something's going on right now. Um, and it's about um, a whole lot of things that, that uh, we're all thinking about right now. And that is that, you know, information Provenance for people has gotten really mucked up. It's really, you know, it's a great thing that, you know, as compared to the previous life of, of content publishing, that um, content creation is democratized and, you know, everybody can do it. But there's um, a big problem with that, which is now it's democratized and everybody can do it. Um, and, and also that you know, the, the ownership of algorithms is, um, is distorting the information that's being put out there and promoting stuff that's uh, incendiary and engaging uh, and, you know, clickbait and all that stuff. So how do we, um, you know, take control of what information it is that we choose to see and not be distracted by stuff that we don't really want to see, but is candy, you know, how do we make our diet what we choose and is healthy, uh, not like the candy and treats and fatty stuff that somebody's sho shoving at us. I mean, there's lots of, lots of metaphors I love to get into there, but I'll, I'll stop myself. Um, and, and then on the other hand, how do we take um, what we have and selectively present it to the rest of the world with the control to say, you know, this information is mine and protected and private. And just for me, this is stuff I want to share with this group right here, this is stuff I want to share with my family, this is what I want to share with these professional peers, this with, you know, people I'm working on a project with, this with my doctor, this with my, you know, accountant, whatever, you know, there's all different layers of, of access and intimacy that we want to be able to control. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that big project is something that I'm fully cognizant that, you know, I'm not the only one working on and there are many of us and, and a lot of us here are, are, you know, really concerned with those same things and how they overlap. So, you know, I spend a lot of my time in groups, um, just kind of industry for lack of a better term groups um, that are about, um, 
you know, ethical, ethical tech and information sharing and, uh, you know, anti-disinformation and um, digital privacy. And um, my frustration is that in a capitalist um, world, we're all coming from this sort of oh, how do I get my piece of the pie? I, you know, Factor, I co-founded it with someone else and it was founded as a uh, for-profit and I'm really frustrated by that. I don't, I don't wanna seek venture capital. I'm like looking for ways to merge what I'm doing with what other people are doing and the, the legal frameworks and the economic conditions for that are almost, you know, a brick wall, but I'm sure there's a way through it and I'm determined to find it. Um, so uh, yeah, that's a bit of a ramble, but um, a little bit of a framing of, of where I'm coming from. And, um, you know, I'm just really excited about you know, I'm here in Flotilla and working with the Meta Project and, you know, individually working with a lot of people here um, and a lot of people who aren't here, um, just trying to connect us all and make individuals um, more, more equal, not uh, living in somebody else's shopping mall, but, you know, both safe at home and able to come into a public space that's truly public and interact with each other easily. Uh, so that's all. That's me. Thank you, Michael, for sharing. And in your world, I know we're. Uh... Vincent. <laughs> My turn, okay. So let's see, I'll try to keep this sort of short. Um, yeah, my background is in the intersection of engineering and design. And so I um, went to an engineering school uh, called RPI and I wanted to initially like solve problems and engineers are great at solving problems. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll create like robotic submarine systems and solve the world's greatest problems. And then through like kind of going through the initial engineering courses, I realized like, yeah, like engineers are really great at solving problems, but they don't necessarily get to choose which problems are worth solving or which are the like important problems to solve. And so that's kind of how I got into design and design thinking. And I uh, did a dual program with uh, this, degree it was um in the social sciences and it was about like how to look at technology and think about what could be the unintended consequences um how do we use design in order to shape technology in ways that have more ethical outcomes that are it's more equitable um for people on the planet and um yeah so through that i kind of was like in half of me is like very pro tech and the other half of me is like against tech and very like trying to make sure it's designed to create more positive impacts than negative effects and and externalities so um yeah and and through through that i ended up discovering that i really love connecting people and i kept seeing the same problems over and over again in like every single group chat that I was in, every club the part of, um, there would be this kind of like falling out where people would lose touch and then not have an easy way to reconnect. And so um, I started a club called Ties and it was a group of like human matchmakers on college campus that basically um, would help people connect with what they're looking for. So we ended up um, hosting different uh, events and um, we had a directory of people working on startups. And when people would come to us and be like, hey, I'm looking to work on a startup, we could like match make. And so I'm really interested in how we can kind of use technology to help us do that at scale. 
um, because it, I experienced firsthand, like some of my roommates, like working on the same exact problem, like a desalination system where there was someone else on a campus of like, you know, a thousand people working on the same exact issue and they didn't know about each other. Um, and so that was kind of the initial inspiration for the work I'm doing now with Catalyst, which is a combination between a social network and a digital library. So it's all about like cataloging information and um, tagging it. It's, it's very structured and organized. So it's like, you know, a, a really intricate library system of like knowing where things go. So that way you can either with a human matchmaker or in an automated way, connect people with what they're looking for when they need it. And so um, instead of kind of like recreating chat systems and like notification systems like the other piece that I started working on was like how to integrate with other technologies such as discord telegram mattermost that have these like streams or even like a zoom chat where there's like stream of information and instead of like having another stream like how can we take information from that and organize it add some level of structure to it to make it easier to find later um and so that's kind of where the um, Catabot project comes in, which is connected. Um, and so been just trying to do the matchmaking and the connecting in a way that also doesn't overwhelm us with even more information and even more feeds. Um, so it's kind of like, how can you, given that we already have all these feeds and, and ways and places that people are sharing, how can we organize that information where we can connect it to people when they need it? Yeah, I've been thinking about that for um, my my work at Four Mile, where we just want to like capture knowledge, <clears throat> and we're all working on Slack. A lot of, of that knowledge is captured there, and how do we extract it, you know, in a way that like you know people can easily find? Oh, okay, this particular approach to a problem has been done before, um, but it's like housed here in the Slack thread. Um, yeah, thinking about how to kind of memorialize it in a way that's easily accessible um awesome man i am inspired i okay i see what you guys are up to <laughs> i i'm present now so this i'm i'm enrolled i um what's next i know uh i have to jump i'm late for a call but um i uh, want to be involved in some form of fashion i'm sure we i just like i'll join next week um and sorry to kind of take over the call. I don't know how long are you guys are actually on the call, actually. Um, is it for an hour? Well, I'm so glad you came. And I, I just want to say to all of you, I'm so grateful to have all of you. And I appreciate you so much. And like my heart is so full when I leave here. <laughs> and Pete, this was a really hard week. You're, I mean, I think a lot of us have felt that, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I do think a lot of us have felt that. And so I just want to tell you that I really love you all. I, and I mean that I, I'm not known to give away compliments when I don't mean them. <laughs> so, and thank you, Kalechi, for coming. I'm, I'm so happy that you were, that you came. So glad I Thank came you, Kalechi. I really I hope, hope we see own. you again. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be here next week. Yeah. 90 minutes, right? Okay. We'll have to plan accordingly. Alrighty, I have to drop. But um Bye. thank you guys for sharing and excited for what's next. Okay. And before we get off, we will have to get back to what we were talking about, which was our in-person get together. <laughs> yeah, that would be really Thank nice. You, you can also <laughs> Yeah. Uh, where, where, when will that be? I doubt it'll come, but curious. That's, we what, that's the topic of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could start up a, something in Mattermost too, like just <clears throat> to try to. Um, we still have, there's the, there's the New York, the New York channel or New Yorkers yeah. channel in Mattermost. We can I see. Invite, invite even honorary New Yorkers like Pete, even Mark, Mark, Mark Antoine. Uh, <laughs> 
I'd love to be an honorary New Yorker, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> it's certainly easier for me to go there than uh, West Coast. <laughs> Um, I, I would love to bring the conversation back around to the stuff that's happened for you guys in matter most this week, you know, if there's support, I feel like because I was on vacation last week, I got out of the loops, but I'm happy to listen and, and be present or provide support or, you know, just, I, I'm, I would love to hold space for that wherever that needs to go. If that's a service, you guys have did a lot of work in the last couple of weeks. And I know how hard that is. <laughs> I've been in those spaces too, within Mattermost. I mean, we've all been in those spaces before. I mean, I'm sorry, within Meta. And so um, just ha happy to happy to hold space for that. One of the challenges is that Jordan's, um, Jordan's a little bit out, actually a lot out. He shouldn't be doing anything with us, but um, he's with uh, uh, the in-laws, spending time with the family, so. Um, so that's kind of exacerbated a little bit. Sorry, are yeah. you? What are, did I hear that you were working on interrupt among other things right now? Uh, who are you asking? You mostly, but um, the... I, I, nothing. Well, yeah, nothing new. Um, interop architecture and stuff like that. Um, the, the, the thing that I, I have been working on um, uh, is my little corner of decentralization, which uh, I think was, uh, well, Jordan and I are still working through it, but we're doing it as very asynchronously. Um, so my, my part is a little bit smaller than what Jordan was thinking and they fit together. Um, but drawing the line of where, drawing the edge. Um, somebody was talking about Ed, Nora Bateson and edges yesterday. Um, anyway, uh, nothing super new. Been reading a lot on um, new models of CRDTs and how to do convergence and how to do this and how to do that. It's been awesome. It's like, there's been new papers by uh, Martin Kleppman. I could do a review of those if you're interested. It's probably, probably unfortunately not for me, but um, CCCRDT is, um, is how people have worked out technology so that you can do two things, more than one person can do kind of the same thing in the same place. So a classic example is Google Docs or HackMD, where a bunch of people can type together and everybody can see the changes in real time. Stacey, you're muted. So C stands for collaboration? Uh, uh, it stands for conflict-free. Um, convert, replica uh, replicated yeah. data types. Yeah. Data oh, thank you. So not, impressed not by that your I think about knowledge. this very much. But. Conflict conflict free replicated data types is the CRDT. Is that right? Yeah. It's conflict free or convergent. You may be right. I'm not I sure. I think it's I just... conflict free. Which so there's a whole topic right there. Is it conflict free or convergent? Um, Why do they leave out the F? <laughs> you're right. You're right. Conflict free. Uh, because it's dash lowercase f. So my my old my old thing. I, I was on Team OT, um, Operational Transform, for the longest time. Um, not because I believed in, not, I, so. The OT I'm, came before, right? I wasn't on Team OT until the <laughs> games around. <laughs> I'm on Team OT just because Joseph Gentle was, was uh, he was like the main OT person and he did Joseph? amazing work. I have a question. <laughs> Who yeah. makes up these team names? It, like, those aren't team the names. Of all these, of all there, these, there aren't. Those weren't team names. Joseph Gentle, or maybe somebody right before him, said, "I have this new algorithm. Uh, I will call it Operational Transform." And there's, it, it makes sense why he called it Operational Transform. Um, so then somebody else, I think in parallel, I don't think they were working off each other, but somebody else said, um, "We need a way to have." data change in multiple places at once, but not create conflicts. It needs to be, so I've, I've created this conflict, uh, 
it's replicated, it's conflict free, it's data types. They're they're really basic, you know, not not brand names at all. But they're teams name themselves basically. Well, it's 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 not barely teams. a project. It's it's just algorithms. It's well, algorithms. And but you and identified your, but you both identified yourself as being on a team. I no, just no, want no. To well, that out. Emoji. I, I they was... were they were different separate algorithms for doing the same thing. Um, okay. And and it blew my mind. Joseph Gentle is this wonderful Australian guy, and if you saw him, you would think he was a surfer dude, you know. Um, but he also did this amazing. I so Mark Antoine is probably smart enough to understand uh, CRDTs and OTs and stuff like that. I just can't, you know. I start looking at the math. I, I I don't have enough math. There's a whole interesting story about me and math. I I I have I'm really good at math, but it's all intuitive. I don't actually understand any of it really. I can just feel it. Um, separately, my my oldest kid, my daughter. Um, she's actually a math genius. She's a whiz. Um, and, um, you know, she can look at math and she thinks it's, a, she and I are both good at languages in different ways. And she's like, oh, math is just another language and I get it. But anyway, so I never, I never understood OT, um, it, but it's, it's like magic, you know, you like drag and, and Joseph Gentle used to write these couple hundred lines of JavaScript, TypeScript, CoffeeScript code. And, um, and it's like here, all you have to do is this, and and magically you're doing this like conflict-free, you know, replicated stuff. And it's like, how does that even work? Um, I, I guess you know that if you don't think about it, it's it's just like if you don't think about Google Docs and the fact that people are typing together, it's like yeah, okay, I get it. You know, it's more tech. The, the techies invented some stuff. It's actually really really hard. And I've read enough of the math, and I've read enough diagrams and stuff like that. You know, it's like, okay, this person changed, you know, this this character, and there's three other people, and that person changed that character, and how do you make sure that all of that data flows around that network, and everybody ends up seeing the same thing, right? And and not like because the letters are coming out of order at different times and different ways, and people are hitting backspace and all that kind of stuff. All of that stuff is happening. And making sure that everybody sees the same thing is like mind-blowingly difficult. Um, so, so OT was magic. Joseph Gentle was, you know, I got to see him a couple of times. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. And I, I love that there's this person in the world. And then I'm hearing this thing about CRDT and I'm like, oh, you know, Joseph, Joseph is the, the genius here. I don't know why, why even anybody even bothered inventing it. And he says, so the mind-blowing thing was like five or 10 years later, Joseph Gentles, he posted something on Twitter and blew my mind. He said, okay, CRDT is actually the right way to do it. There's like little tiny, like, you know, pluses Just and minuses between them that make, you know, make it so that OT is not perfect like I thought it was. CRDT is actually much more close to perfect than OT, you know, down in the like, like nth decimal place so it like blew my mind when joseph like to me went over to the dark side right <laughs> and it turns out oh no i guess that's the light side i was i was wrong this whole time so the, the, I, I was very much thinking they're not neither is that complicated by the way i mean i understand reading the math no i understand reading the math can be complicated but the idea behind them is not that I, complicated. that's fair yeah um, I get intimidated by math. Fair enough. D -d 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 reading the math is not that easy, but OT and CRDT are not that hard. And for me, it's like, what's the problem with, with OT? Because it works. But yeah, I did read, I just post posted Joseph's, I was wrong, CRDTs are the future. And, uh, <laughs> and I think I see why. Uh, and it And it does show how, Kudos to Joseph Gentle for having the modesty of saying, yeah, I got it wrong. It reminds me of this uh, Frege and uh, Russell, right? Uh, <laughs> it's this kind of humil intellectual humility. I was on the wrong track. And I think that's true. And Martin Klippmann's work is also luminous. Uh, it's so clear. It's so... It just works. And I've actually started playing with auto merge, which is one of Clipman's implementations of CRDT. Beautiful work. And yeah, uh, if you're interested in multi-editor and multi, 
many people modifying something at once. This is where it go it's going. But the other basic principle before that, uh, it's uh, something that was happening with Calm and Bloom. I don't know if you remember those, Pete. Uh, Bloom, I think, the ring of the bell. Yeah, Bloom, Bloom as a project didn't go anywhere, but the ideas behind Bloom are, again, extremely luminous and clear. And uh, a lot of those ideas end up in the newest uh, Clipman theoretical incarnation, which is Upsets, by the way. Upsets is the new shiny thing in that <laughs> world. And um, I think it's extremely important. Uh, even if you're not thinking of real time, if you're thinking of, I'm doing something on my side, you're doing something on, on your side, and we want to combine them and see what's the common view of this. And this is where upsets or bloom or all these approaches are relevant to the notion of we want to combine information. For, 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 for everybody else, sorry we're geeking out here, but, um, but it is actually not just Google Docs or HackMD and characters. Um, it, uh, the, it's a general purpose thing <clears throat> for databases or um, you know, even, even H one of Joseph Gentle's uh, early demos was being able to change things like drag and drop um, uh, list items in a web page uh, and multiple people could do that at the same time and you know the lists stayed in sync um, so it's kind of the same thing with databases uh, and the other thing is like like Mark Antoine said it's not just real real time it it's also offline works really well so back in San Francisco it was the um, the BART tunnel between the under the bay that goes from San Francisco to Berkeley it's like um, you want to be able to like start collaborating with somebody on a text document and then take the tunnel over to Berkeley and you know with back in the day we didn't have any uh, uh, internet in the tunnel and so you pop up in Berkeley and magically your text editor shows the same thing that somebody else was typing the whole time on so so it can actually be you know it's, it can be like five or ten minutes it can be like days or weeks and maybe par paragraphs have moved around and things like that and you're still able yeah. to reconcile. It's not a trivial problem. But but again, it's reconciling role views again. It's the same problem we keep talking about, whether it's the, the real-time aspect is incidental up to a point to it being the fundamental problem we're all dealing with. And that's why I'm deep in the CRDT world these days. It, it has relationships also to Git. Git kind of does the same thing with human help a little bit, and not, not much human help, but a little bit. And then hyper-knowledge is something where you'd want different people. I, it, in a way, it's kind of the same thing. Hyper-knowledge is a way for, for people to layer changes on top of knowledge structures and yeah. keep them all in sync, kind of. It's a weird way to say it, but... <laughs> So Here, like just think, uh, to, sorry, Vincent, were you going to say something? This seems like a really like obvious thing, but do any companies just use wiki instead of email and then have some notification set up where like you make a wiki page or, and it just sends. I, I think there are a few companies that do that. Mostly not. Um, Social text was the, the company I ran that did um, enterprise wikis. Our, our company was exactly like that. Um, it turns out uh, you also need chat. Um, so uh, we replaced, um, at, yeah, at the time the enterprise suite was Outlook and, and PowerPoint and uh, Word and SharePoint and whatever Share Drive was before SharePoint. And so we, we didn't use email um, and we didn't use presentations. Um, we just had the wiki. So we had a wiki, but then you also needed chat, uh, which in our time was CR, uh, IRC, which is Slack is basically IRC made nice. <laughs> and Mattermost is basically Slack. And, you know, so yeah, everything or, is. Or, or Jabber. God, I miss Jabber. <laughs> yeah. it's just interesting. We've defaulted to chat cool. tools, which embody, which like we're like attaching files within instead of 
like file tools that the chat goes on top of. It's very interesting if that's the default. And I'm sure uh, Geary would be like, ah, for me saying, <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. See, I, chat, chat is wonderful. I don't want to say chat is, but the problem is you need to have the two modes. You need to have the, the flow and you need to have the stock. You need to have the conversation and then you need to build something lasting that is not just in the moment. But you need both. It's true. You can't always be editing a document. That's a fact. Um, but you can't, if you're just doing chat at some point, reaching back in history to know anything that was said is a stupid way to curate knowledge. And so you need to transform the flow into stock. That's what Idealoom was about. But Idealoom was more web forum than chat because it was before Slack had caught up so much. So we thought, you know, there'll be kind of fast stuff on chat because we were aware of chat. We were using chat jabber <laughs> uh, while developing. We thought there would be a kind of mid-range speed conversation web forum style. And the long-term idea loom would curate the conversation into this outline. It didn't happen because getting people to shift to another um, web forum tool is hard, which we knew. So that, you know, we put, we tried to put uh, hooks into, we could hook into mail, which some people still use, so that works, or into Facebook, and then Facebook changed change the API too fast for us to follow, because they don't really want people to get anything out of Facebook. <laughs> That's not in their interest. It's their whole interest is the walled garden. And the whole question of how, as you were saying, Michael, earlier, how to have something that is interoperable yet aware of privacy and uh, who do I want to share this with is an absolutely fundamental problem. I was just gonna, I, I, I misunderstood you and in a, in a serendipitous way, uh, I thought you said wild garden instead of um, walled garden. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, Barbed wire garden. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, the, the fact that um, that Facebook is not only a walled garden, but a wild garden in the sense that it's impossible to find anything is to their advantage. They want you to be in their walled garden and just wandering around aimlessly and distractibly. In a maze of because little it's, passages it's, all it's alike. not organized, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. unscriptable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another um, interesting thing that, that Vincent um, observed there is that, so you've got this, the, however you want to call it, stocks and flows or chats and files, um, chat messages and files. The, we, we end up in systems that Conceptually, conceptually are chat systems with file attachments rather than file systems with messaging. Um, and, and I think I, my pop psychology interpretation of that is that um, uh, is having, having spent a fair amount of time trying to sell my enterprise wiki and being successful you know, largely to, to companies and, and people who just want to get stuff done and don't want to play rock tech. Um, you can, chat seems like a first-class object to almost everybody, um, whereas files are a first-class object to not many people. Um, so when you're explaining to, to somebody, you know, um, I, the, the, a chat system with file, file features is going to be acceptable to a lot more people, kind of just says, uh, oh, it's, yeah, obviously I need to send messages to that person, and it would be great if I could attach files. Most people don't go around going, oh, look at all the files I have. And, you know, that's the thing I really care about. And, hey, if I could message this, a person about this file, that would be awesome. That's, it's just not, I, you know, that's not the way people work. So I think it's, there's a, there's a, a kind of a fake um, saying, you know, uh, everything, everything uh, evolves until it, it has a chat system or something like that. I forget the. Wouldn't you call the common system in Google Doc, a bit of a chat system, though. Uh, a bit, yeah. 
Well, yeah. I would point to uh, social, particularly Facebook, um, as a sort of um, midway model that has not been allowed to flourish in a practical way, which is, you know, between chat at between files being the primary object and chat being the, the primary thing is the post and the comments which serve as chat. And the post might be a statement, a question, a file, whatever, but the fact that you have a conversation that is attached to an object rather than an object that's embedded in a conversation is great and everybody's you know comfortable with that and experiences that all the time on Facebook and Instagram and you know any social social space like that um, and that to me is is like something I mean we've worked with that a little bit on Factor you know that you're posting something and then able to like comment under it um, and if if Slack I feel like there's there's some sweet spot there. Like both things have to exist in the sense that unlike Facebook, you need to be like lightning searchable to say, now I want to see like all the stuff on this subject that is, you know, a video or whatever, which Facebook doesn't want you to do because they don't want you to get directly there. And then jump into the asynchronous conversation about that thing, not have it having disappeared up the Slack, Mattermost, whatever, you know, chat um, river. The, the, uh, so I think there's, I think there's something to be found there. The, this is the Reddit niche, right? If the thing exists on the open web, you can have a Reddit conversation around it <laughs> and it works really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, Reddit is a little bit, to me, Reddit is a little bit more the object in, embedded in the conversation because like a Reddit, um, uh, it, it, a subreddit- It's on the object as a whole, not on- Yeah, a subreddit, you, you can't really find the object. It's not, it's not object primary, it's forum primary. I mean, it's like the conversation, if you consider the forum a conversation, I mean, I think you're seeing that model as this is a discussion under one object, which is the subject, right? Which is, yeah, which is, yeah, which, which is, is what often, I'm saying. But which is often a URL of a document on the web. Sure. And, and, and that way, the, the primary, you have a primary document on the web and then you have the conversation around it. Are you, but are you talking about a, an entire subreddit or somebody's individual post within that subreddit that is a URL? No, I'm speaking about a, a subreddit based on the URL of something else. Right, right, sure, sure. But I think what, what tends to happen on Reddit, and to me why I wouldn't put, say it's an example of the, of the I hate to use Facebook as a model for anything, but that, that Facebook model is that um, the, unless an entire subreddit is built around a URL, what you tend to get is, a subreddit that is a subject that ends up being the forum is a conversation within which somebody will post a URL and there'll be a little bit of discussion of that, but it sort of ends up working a little bit like Slack. I mean, it's better than Slack, but because it's threaded it, for one because, thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. Another conversation. I was wondering if we might want to circle back to to some of the stuff about please that's please. more general um i mean it's related to this but that's going on in in uh meta sorry, I, world sorry i got you no, no 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 we all did i mean you know we were doing the kalechi talk and then you know um it, it was great i um, i ended up i spoke over wendy and then she didn't get to talk and i was wondering what she was going to say if she remembers um sure yeah and i'm happy to go back to meta after this too i was just going to throw in that Maybe some of this has what we were talking about in terms of the difference between chat and the comments on documents and documents themselves was speaking to me. I never really thought about it before. And it was in terms of why people are doing what they're doing. 
And I was thinking to me in term, more in terms of sense making, like, so if I'm chatting, there's a little more of like, I can just throw thought, th thoughts out, it depends on the forum, but yeah, I can get, I can throw thoughts out. If somebody replies to it, great, if not, that's fine. I'm like throwing my thoughts there. I don't necessarily need to reflect on them as much. If I'm making a comment on a document, I'm reflecting on something in the document. I'm trying to add to it, or I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring it forward by commenting on it. Right. And so I'm taking, it's like in a meeting, I'm taking there, there's times when we share things and then the conversation moves on. Fine. That's more of chat, like I'm in the argument I'm making here, versus the time when I'm sharing something and then someone else goes, Oh, I want to add on to that. Right. There's there's something different that's happening when we're when we're making efforts to connect what we're saying to each other than just a bunch of inf information data points thrown into the middle. And then the document itself starts to be an artifact that can change for a while, that probably would change for a while and then eventually it falls off and stops being changed so much. But as we're having conversations, somebody, somebody is sense making it into a document or into an artifact that then can serve over time. There's very few people who are gonna go through a chat and make sense out of it. it, it, it it's, it's more in the moment, right? Versus a document, which is hopefully now curated to the point and sense made to the point where someone else could read it and get some knowledge out of it. So um, that's, I was starting to realize in terms of a sense making continuum, I hadn't really thought about it before. So to your point, Pete, yeah, like makes sense to me when I think about it that way, like chat's available to everybody. Just, I had this thought and psh, here's my thoughts, here's my thoughts, here's my thoughts, here's my thoughts. It's moving from that to something else. And, and, and instead as a society, we've actually moved more toward the chat, you know, and maybe some of that's because of that gets ads and it's easy and it's right, like, so, from a tech perspective and from the way our cap capitalist society is set up, it also serves the system. Um, but it's, you know, it'd be nice to move move things in the other direction too. And I do think all, all the parts are, are important as well. You know, so I think they all have a role to play, but putting it in that, for me, putting it in that context of sense-making was helping me put it in its lanes. You know, it's, it, it's absolutely important. The, um, it's all the, the issue of sense-making through time. Right, the chat is the immediate reaction. It's necessary. We need to, you know, sense and react. That's one temporality. The document is crystallized, the result of a crystallized thought process. It's curated, but the problem is it's usually curated by one or very few people because collaboration is hard, and it becomes harder as you add people. <laughs> so it's single or not that many points of view. And, and, and as you say, it stops evolving. And in a way, it's a good thing because if it keeps evolving, it loses coherence. And that's a problem with wikis. Make, keeping wiki pages coherent as you evolve them is even harder. Uh, so what you either you have successive sense-making articles, maybe by different people, and but then it's like, okay, What's the sense of history and how does the later version connect to the earlier version, yada, yada, yada. How do multiple versions talk together? And that's the part that I'm most interested in. But the, the whole question of you have created a document, at some point you have to revisit it. You, you, you know, we took decisions, we made predictions, we made sense making a certain way, and then new facts come, and we tried things a certain way, it worked, it didn't work, lessons learned, we have to revisit without destroying the historical information in the document, because this is the best we could do with that information at that time, and we want to know, to keep knowing that having that kind of information leads to this kind of decision, but by the way, now with new information, we get a different decision. That's meta. So now I want to go back to Michael, who wanted to move on to meta stuff. I was just um, commenting on the wiki chat post object <laughs> interface. Um, I, I have a, a quick thing. Maybe I can fit into the interstice here, which is I. Um, 
the 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 thing I posted, uh, Jamie Zawinski said, you know, everything evolves into email, basically into an email client. And then uh, Luke W said, everything evolves into a chat system. Um, there's there's something there. Those are connections too. But but then I I remember that J, uh, Jamie Zawinski does these amazing rants. Um, so I have one or two collected, and I can't find them right now. So I was looking for rants, and I found this one about kill math. Um, <laughs> uh, it's uh, by the by the way, the other funny thing is um, in high school I was considered a math genius. Like like oh my god, you know. Um, uh, and literally, I was number 11. I placed number 11 in the state competition for, for math. It's a small state. I was in Nevada, big geographic state, small population. But anyway, so then I went to Caltech where they actually do math. And it, the other thing is, uh, as, a, as a high school student, I didn't, they didn't have enough math. So I had to go to the University of Nevada, Reno, where I was in like a junior level class and blew the curve for a bunch of med students, you know? <laughs> and so... When I say that I, I'm not good at math, it's a weird thing, right? Because most people think I would be really good at math. But anyway, I went to Caltech where they really do math and bam, like within like a day, it was, okay, Pete, you're in remedial math, 0 0.9. Literally, that was what it was called. <laughs> I didn't get to go with, to math one like everybody else, you know? So it worked out great because we had a great, a wonderful TA who spent a lot of time with us. And, you know, I got to learn about differential equations or whatever, but, but anyway, so I found this rant uh, in my collection of rants, and it's really good. And it's not so much about math as much as visualization and representing uh, uh, data and stuff in in a way in in a lot often visual ways. Um, so I, I felt like that was a worthy thing to drag back into um, our space because. I just skimming over that long blog post. Um, I think there's a lot of articulation about stuff that we care about. Um, I never did get good at math at, at Caltech. I was really good at physics because physics in, is kind of intuitively math, um, but the math part, I just was never good at. Um, I did not like geometric proofs, although I had um, in, in ninth and 10th grade in high school, um, we had an algebra and ge geometry teacher who brutalized the, ch the children. <laughs> and I didn't know that at the time. I just thought she was a little weird. Um, but she had very little patience for, for high schoolers. Um, and so she would run through stuff. And, um, and if you didn't get it, she had no pity on you. And she brutalized people, really. Uh, so there was a... a a young lady who never got the the concept of an invisible one in front of a like you know if you have an x plus y, it's like two x plus two y made sense to her. But if you take away the number, so there's no number, she never got the concept that there's an invisible one there, right? So she ended up being called the teacher called her invisible one um, because you know she never got it. There was another one. That, so I, I took geometry from her and I think I got spoiled from about the whole geometric stuff um, in general because of her. Um, the, the poor person that she brutalized in geometry was uh, Albert. Um, uh, so we learned the angle, angle, side, angle, angle, you know, side, whatever. And then um, side, side, angle. Uh, and then there's angle, side, side, which spells ass, which you're supposed to think of that as the um, as the one that doesn't work, right? It doesn't have enough of the right components to make it work. So Albert never got that one. And because his name was Albert, uh, ASS became Albert says so, you know, Albert says so that this is, is proper. So the other funny thing about her was uh, she kept the room at like 65 degrees to keep us all at attention, you know, everybody was like freezing to death the whole time. Anyway, I really liked her because <laughs> she left me alone. Um, but I didn't realize until later that, that she was a horrible teacher. Um, so I don't even know about geometry. I, I got, you know, I, I like hid. I, I didn't want to get Pete, Pete says so about something. So Indeed. sorry. Um, anyway, I think that blog post is interesting um, and it might be worth a look and especially maybe for Vincent too um, or, or folks doing mapping maps and visualizations and stuff. Which, which post, the kill math one? Yes. 
Uh, it's so it, it's got a catchy title, Kill Math, and and it makes it sound like I hate math, but I don't. <laughs> um, and it, but it, but whatever. It's not really about math. It's more about visualization and you know geometric, geometric things and how to show those to people. So, apologies for the digression. For people who are visual. And and I, and I to totally value that, but I'm not visual. I'm a math as logic person. <laughs> and I, these, these visual things don't help me, which is fine. I, I mean, I, I have to ask. I, I wanted to ask, and then I talked myself out of it, but I have to ask, especially because he kind of gave me an opening. So it turns out that I'm, I'm also a really good scholar, um, not because I'm smart, which is what everybody thought, you know, when I was in school. Um, it's because I have visual memory for words, which sounds like a really weird thing to me, but um, I have it and one of my daughters have it. Um, and we did not know this at all until uh, we were driving in the car and my, my wife said, how do you spell a long complicated word, right? And my daughter and I both signed up and it's like, you know, you just rattle it off. And she's like, how do you guys do that? And both of us said, well, you just close your eyes and you read it off, right? Of course. Um, of course. And my wife is like, no, that's not a thing. <laughs> you know, so I wonder, I wonder how you guys spell complicated words. Sorry for my dog. I and, don't. and if that's set, <laughs> I have to think of writing it. I'm because a visual have... person, but yeah, I, I, I don't have a visual acuity for, for, um, for spelling. I'm, I'm a horrible speller, horrible speller. So Here grateful you... for spell check. I'm really, really curious. Like I'm really curious about that. I feel like those muscles have atrophied, but I mean, I was always a really good speller, you know, like I won spelling bees when I was like a kid in school, but, um, and I'm a visual person, um, but I don't think, I don't think I picture the whole word. I mean, I know a word looks wrong, when it's yeah. not spelled right but, but it's pattern um, recognition yeah it's different i don't know, I don't know. I, yeah, i'm an acutely non-visual person i'm very comfortable with spelling but it's not visual i had a friend who was one of the most visual person i knew amazing painter and she told she was telling me how in exams she would visualize the page from the textbook and <laughs> read that in her mind while answering questions i was like <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I realize for me, what it is, is I'm such an associative thinker that I'm building maps in my head and Same. words don't fit into the mapping. Just like facts for sense. me or names for me don't fit into the mapping unless there's some sort of story around the name that makes same, make same, 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 same. Right. So for me that it's not really a visual thing versus a non-visual thing. It's more of a, of a fact, like facts and dates rather, rather than systems kinds of things. I'm just not a facts and dates person. And no, it's just, it has to be a system. If it's not a system, I like, yeah, I was right so good at remembering biology, a lot of biology because it was systems mm -hmm. like this, this is used for that, except the names of bones and names of muscles. Right. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but i remember i used to know the names of every single brain part because of course i was more interested but i knew what it was for <laughs> yeah right putting it in the context yeah makes all the difference for me too yeah but anyway sorry we're really drifting but it's so interesting the, the, the variety You're like jeopardy Je can't don't get me in a game of jeopardy like i die mm, it'll take me half an hour like what was the name of the person who you know i'm still i'm still trying to understand the question <laughs> Different i remember styles. i remember also like having visual like i had these mind maps of things that had no there, there was no basis for my mind map. It's just the way I drew the relationships and the distances in my head. Like when I was a little kid, I was into, you know, comic books. And when I pictured the various titles and characters and the Marvel universe and DC universe, I can still remember like, you know, Spider-Man is here and Fantastic Four is there and Daredevil is over here and Avengers are there and X-Men is, you know, I mean, it's like every, everything was in a place 
and it was very specific and it was the same way with like car companies and you know you know chrysler ford you know gm and sub brands and where they all fit in this kind of tree this map what were the basis of those locations i have no idea but that was the only way i could like go through that those bits of knowledge and get to the subcomponents was in that map which i've never written down but i can still see in my head you know random it's your it's your mind palace mind palace i like that Mark and yeah. fun. it's a it's, it's a thing yeah mm -hmm. yeah my daughter's um, fabulous with all of that and she's good with remembering facts and names so it's like it's incredible she's like a whole she's a walking encyclopedia kind of person it's really fascinating to watch to have a front row seat as a parent to watch someone like that develop has really been fun. I've learned a lot. Meta project. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> um, Pete, I don't know if, if you were exactly referring to this or, and I know we back channeled a little bit in the, in the meta meeting about, um, the, um, the skills and passions skills and passions google doc that you know was the kind of low-hanging fruit output of our our waterfall in in a previous meeting and led to both in the the last um skills passions meeting which was funny because I mean, both of these things, Wendy, I've like seen some of the, the Mattermost conversation and in the, in the previous conversations about this group, it's like, why did this group spring into existence at the time that you were on vacation and you didn't like sign up for it or anything, which you would have, but it's like totally tapestry related. Um, and we've gotten into all these questions of like, what, what is what is the relationship between everything each of us are doing and everybody else is doing and the most basic manifestation of like here I am I am me participating in the meta project like how do I get to know my fellow members and figure out how we might collaborate and and how does that intersect with the needs that the meta project has and you know we're representing it in a bunch of different ways and like honestly i don't even mean to be representing it all i'm like into into is the idea that like anybody should be able to i mean like to me google sheets is too complex let alone you know airtable tapestry massive wiki catalyst you know you know anything you know factor um and how how do we make it possible for people to show up with a name tag and work from there. Um, and um, and I, I mean, I think it's, it's sort of the er, you know, problem in information sharing and ethical tech and, you know, all the stuff that we were talking about before is like, we all want to have an identity and, you know, and, and be safe in our own identity and the privacy and agency that go with like me. And then we all wanna collaborate and connect and just first of all, be able to show up the way we could show up to a space full of strangers and say, here's a representation of me. And I don't have to already have joined the group and subscribe to something else to be able to have my representation that exists in their centralized way, not 
my decentralized self. And like it, it's, it's paralleling this debate on decentralization and it, it, it's, I, I see tensions developing around it and I like have hard, a hard time discussing it. Um, and I, I don't want it to be about like spreadsheet versus not spreadsheet because I don't care. I mean, you know, I, wh what I really want is just like, you know, people to show up with the augmented reality of being more than a box on a Zoom screen and, you know, this hovering thing that says, hi, I'm willing to share this much with these people, you know, I'm, this is what I'm about and this is where I am or no, I don't want to tell you where I am and, you know, whatever it is and have that be like easy and automatic. Um, and, and all around me, I'm seeing like, oh, I've got the solution for that. Or, you know, I've got the solution for that. And I've got the solution for that. And I'm working at it. I'm going to make it all make sense. And I feel like this is, this is you know, I, I know this is getting like theoretical and impractical and stuff, but it's like, I keep going back to this thought and we've talked about this in Flotilla before and you know I have with various of you you know the idea of the home that I am you know my home and I like you know can be found and find you based on our willingness to share our address and you know and you can always drop something in my mailbox I can't stop you from doing that. And you can always see the outside of my house, but maybe I'll invite you into my living room and maybe I'll invite you into, you know, more intimate spaces, but I'm safe. You're, you're you, I'm me, you know, it's all, it's all prescribed in, in the physical world. And, you know, the, the postal system is key in that. And that's a whole sidebar um, and, you know, making the analogy for the postal system. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like in the meta project, there's this challenge of, um, of individuals representing themselves in an effective way. I mean, embodying, you know, avataring themselves for a weird verb you know, to, to just be able to walk into the room, say, here I am, and figure out how to connect to people. And that's independent of then somebody collating that information, curating it, acting as a matchmaker, acting as a, you know, HR department, um, delegating responsibilities, making contracts, you know, official or implicit um, and I like am attracted to Google Docs only because it seems like the dumbest you know generally available language um, you know doesn't involve a learning curve for most people the other thing that honestly attracts me is, and I, I wonder about, and I don't want to say me, because I mean, it's just like, I wonder about is like LinkedIn, you know, like if, <laughs> if the meta project were a group on LinkedIn, where like people, and I mean, I hate the idea of a centralized platform. It's just that like, everybody's already there and you could or link tree for that matter, where you could like, you know, have some way of saying, I proclaim myself to be meta project and here is who I am. And like, I want to describe myself and my willingness to participate in some way. Anyway, I'm dumping a bunch of stuff, but um, uh, um, yeah. 
<laughs> that's that's I, I'm I'm like kind of frustrated to find myself. I feel like in a little bit of engaged in something of uh, conflict might be too strong a word, but just sort of like tension with people I have no I have no disagreement with. You know, it's just that I'm trying to open it wide. End of spiel. <laughs> Do you want to go first, Wendy? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I, I think it was no coincidence that I was away last week. Like, I think there's a need for these processes to be tried by quite a few different people and for all of us to come together inside the frustration to try to find a better solution. And I feel you, <laughs> I feel your pain. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work to even just put together a, a, a one spreadsheet like that. I'm sure it took you hours, right? Not that, no, okay, sure. Okay, good, um, even better then. Um, but it's one of those like, one of those things about working together that we all know we need, we all know that we need something. We've been describing these things inside of every group of we only had this, right? We've been all describing that is, and we all recognize that it's pretty much baseline. Like this is just baseline. There's so many other things we could do if we could get this baseline down. Um, and yet I have found too, and I, I heard, I think I heard this in what you were saying, but correct me if I'm wrong, that when we go to share, like uh, just the seed of it, right? Here's just the first step that we're taking and mapping this thing. There immediately we get responses like, yeah, but it'd be great if we could like incorporate the world and if we could, right? And so, and this isn't good enough. And why couldn't you scrape LinkedIn? And why couldn't you, you know, and it's like, um, cause I'm one person and I only had two hours and this is, is, so I'm having a hard time getting the right feedback, right. Being in being nebulous. Like, I don't mean that to be judgy about it, but it's to get feedback that will help take what there is one more step forward, right. Not a million steps forward. And not that that feedback isn't all valuable, right. To help paint a picture of where we need to go or what the vision is. But when the scope is so huge, it's hard to create a bridge that's just the next step of the bridge, right? We're trying to get across the Grand Canyon and we all know what, what it's gonna look like on the other side. We're starting to have a vision of what it's, gonna, but we need a bridge and to build that bridge, you know, we're trying to, and we don't even know what the bridge looks like. We're not sure what we're making out of, you know, it's brand new, no one's ever really figured this out. We have pieces, we kind of know what this bridge kind of bridge looks like, that kind of bridge, but we're talking about the Grand Canyon here. None of those bridges are gonna work. So we need to figure, <laughs> we need to figure out something else. And, um, and so we take one step and everybody goes, yeah, I mean, the steps sort of good, I guess I can't really get much out of it. Could you build the whole bridge? Like, you know, next week would be really great. So I'm, that's where I'm, I'm reading into your frustration. I know that's where my frustration is, is, and I'm coming to the conclusion, like, I'll just keep taking steps. I'll keep taking the next right step that makes the most sense to me from what I'm hearing, not because I shared it and got good feedback, but because it seems like the right next step from what I'm hearing. And I'll just keep doing that until eventually the bridge is far enough along that people start going, oh, and the conversation starts to move. So I, I'm I'm with you. Like, I don't think you've, I don't know. I, I kind of want to curious about your comment about feeling like you made some enemies. I, I certainly, you know, or like people are mad at you. What was the phrase you're like, people are mad at you for maybe misrepresenting or I don't know. I yeah, was kind of curious about that. I, I don't think I went that far, but it's, it's I mean, like, I just like feel being like in conflict with people that you don't even think conflict. that you would be in conflict. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that was of, being, what was know, that about? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, Sorry, I mean, are you are, are you looking for an answer it's a there? Question. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear point of clarification. Assuming I was right with the other some of the other stuff I was saying, then that would be my next question for you, which is, you know, where what was that about a conflict piece? Well, um, I mean, I guess, I mean, just to to story tell, and maybe I'll pick this out for uh, for Wendy E. Um, you know, I I had the experience of 
being somebody who raised their hand to execute, you know, a task that was asked of the collective of like, let's get people together and output the, the skills and passions and talk about how we connect people. And I did that in a Google Doc and one group of people came together and, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking as I, as I tell this, you know, like it's, it's interesting, one person's reaction, I'm telling this in, in non-personified, Wendy E friendly um, ways, you know, one person said, oh, I can manifest this in, in my tool. And, um, and, and so that out of that, that first meeting, you know, that was sort of where we got to. And then in a second meeting, a totally different cast showed up and said, oh, this isn't the way to do this. I can manifest this a different way. And, and you know, somebody else was saying, this isn't even the way we should be thinking about it. And, and then I came back to the person who had sort of, in a way, assigned the task, who said, well, we have to show this result of that question for the task and, and doctored it some more. And then we showed that. And then everybody converged on why it wasn't the right way to do it. And like, I'm not attached to the way of doing it at all. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just like, I was just fulfilling the assignment. So like the tension was sort of like, what? <laughs> I, I, I was back channeling, okay, I'll, I'll end story and, and say, I was back channel channeling with Pete as this was going on. And I said, um, I feel like a pinata <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, or like the spreadsheet was a pinata really. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was the thing. I mean, I, I didn't really feel like people were mad at me. Um, it was just sort of like, people, it raised are, all people these, are mad. All people, these points know, of frustration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 which yeah. I totally get. I mean, okay. I feel that frustration too, and, but it's just a funny thing. Um, and I, and I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, I'll wrap this up because I know Pete and Mark and Tawan both want to say something. I'm just responding to you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. um, but what you were saying about like, we need to build a bridge across the Grand Canyon and we're all about three feet out <laughs> building okay. separate bridges. And, and like, you know, I'm gonna, and, and your statement of like, I'm gonna keep building and, and you know, hope that like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm extrapolating on what you were saying a little bit, but yeah. hope that people see that I've, I've got a good start and they coalesce around the bridge I'm building and together we can build this, this bridge across. But that's the same thing that everybody's saying to themselves. And I, and that's not, not to say that's wrong and not to say that never works. And, and it's sort of, honestly, it's the way that we're used to in, in capitalist world. You know, I mean, it's sort of like everybody's, you know, inventing and somebody hits and somebody on the right, wins. At the right time yeah. and win. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and even in, in the cooperative world, we're, you know, we're wanting everybody to cooperate on a thing that we win by having come up with the way that people are gonna cooperate. And it's just tough. It's, and I understand it completely. Um, yeah. uh, and, you know, I don't know how to beat it, you know, and, and part of it is economic, um, you know. Part, like, part of it is, but even for um, someone like me where, where I'm happy to take the pieces of my bridge and give them to someone else, we're not wired anymore to think about receiving that from someone else, right? So even when I try to offer up stuff, people go, oh, oh yeah, that's nice and move on. Like, I'm like, no, 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 you know, it's hearing it differently too in the conversation is part of it as well, but anyway, I'll stop there. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I hear you. Um, sorry, so Pete. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so so that's, that's one of the knots from this week. <laughs> uh, I know of like 
like two or three more about the same size. I think one's actually bigger. Um, and then like a, a few more that are smaller that are, aren't so knotty. So um, and, and, and a lot of it is, I, so it so I guess I feel weird. I, I don't know about which one of those to talk about even because it's like they're big problems, right? Um, uh, but the, the meta thing for me is somehow we ended up fracturing um, and um, uh, which um, the, my, my story of how that uh, stops happening is, is I think uh, naive. Um, my story of how that stops happening is everybody just takes kind of like rule, maybe not zero, but one or two. Rule one or two is um, try to try to speak in the same place altogether rather than like breaking apart, right? It's like, oh, I'm talking with three people, but we're standing, you know, uh, we're standing outside. Um, uh, we're not in the room with everybody else. And so obviously, let's just stop talking. Let's go back to the room with everybody else and start talking again. Um, there's there's some part of that which is is right, and some part of that is like massively wrong. So, um, uh, I Wendy, I like your right next step thing. That's it's similar to what I've been doing, um, and and actually it sounds a little bit smarter than what I've been doing. I think, but and and I'm not sure how I would even articulate what what I. But I, it, it's more like for me, I guess it's um, everybody should figure out what's imp most important for them and start doing that. Um, and, you know, and look across, you know, look across at everybody else and at least adjust your, your personal, what's the next right thing so that it's also starting to align with other, other people's most right thing, right? Um, uh, and it's kind of funny, I, you know, really originally, I mean, Jordan was the, the reason, the, the most attractive thing about Meta Project lines, Berg and Jordan for me was, Jordan was always really good about saying, hey, 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 calm down, it's okay. All we have to do is like, look for the, the same North Star that everybody else is looking at and, and we'll get there, we'll all get there together. Um, so it's, it's kind of funny that, we haven't been doing that very well for I don't know a, a month or two or something like that. Um, so with all the knots that arose this week, and and the the harder ones are the ones that were not in the right groups and not in the right places talking. Um, and so, like. It's a it's a meta problem or a meta meta problem because um, and then trying to fix it turns into a meta 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 problem. Um, you know, it's like because I kind of raise my hand and say, okay, we're we're doing something the wrong way, <laughs> but it's going to take two two hops of the you know of this part of the bridge to get there, and those parts of the bridge aren't there. <laughs> So, you know, how do we all do that together? How do we like try to make it across those hops that aren't there together or at least arrive on the, you know, on the on the solid part of the bridge and be able to reassemble ourselves or something like that. So it it seems like, you know, it's not only a, uh, it, it's not only like the, how do we see each other part, but it's like, how do we even, end up in the same room together to be able to see each other? And how do we end up in the same room together and hear he each other, be able to listen to each other so that we can talk about what we do, right? Yeah, um, yeah. and then even more importantly, <laughs> how do we recognize the moments when they come that five of us uh, need to leap together to the next, right? Yeah. Not one person, but five people now need to leap together to the next platform and, yeah. um, and, and to time that <laughs> and to coordinate it. Yep. Right. I, I do see that meta from my perspective, meta project, <coughs> that's the genius. If we can figure it out, it's the coordination. Yeah. It's not the, it's not what each sovereign is doing. As you're pointing out, we need to have the governance structure in order to see each other. Right. And in, in our sovereigns, we need people also being responsible and 
mindful about their role, right? And creating a sovereign helps helps do that. People don't need to have a project in order to do that. There's a lot of new thinking in that for people. And then I think the 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 beauty that comes from it, the the potential that sits there is that meta project can then be the place where things get coordinated. And I mean that with with a sense of purpose and a sense of true power over being an organization that has no top down, you have to do what I'm telling you to do. The the directive comes from the bottom up. So it has to be like almost like this, this magnetic field where where all this all the stuff from the sovereigns is is being discovered and being seen on a meta level, even if it's not being seen by individual sovereigns, right? And we need mapping for that and we need sense makers for that and we need weavers for that and we need facilitators for that, right? And then being able to make enough sense of that that we can coordinate something, create a plan and disseminate it back out so people understand what they're supposed to be doing yeah. or being in, in not even as a directive, but as an invitation, right? Not everyone's gonna say yes to and do that forever, do that continually. And yeah. I, I do think that that's a possibility, but we need to get through these things first. And I, um, I, I'm going to throw out here too. I think the importance of the facilitators in this role, right, is is can't be understated. I'm starting to think more and more it would be helpful to have people trained in facilitation as emergent leaders, as facilitated leaders. So I mean, facilitation is very usually very soft kind of term. I mean it in a very powerful way of people coming into the room with the intention of bringing people together with the intention of solving some of these issues around how we're listening to each other, when we're listening to each other, what kinds of meetings, what's the agenda for the meeting, how do we want to establish, what kind of feeling do we want people to leave with, what kind of objectives do we have, I think we could be facilitating the meetings better, I feel like we could be um, built using them to build the community that will help like, I just think all of that, it's not bad, but it could be better. And the longer we go where we're not doing that, the longer we go without the sense making, then the longer we go feeling like we're investing our time and not getting what we want out of it. And eventually that's just going to frustrate people. So that's kind of like the read I've been taking. Nice. I like it. I mean, there are, there are communities of facilitators ready to go. Do you know what I mean? And, but they're not connected yet to meta. And the biggest one I know of is through Trey, but she's very busy. I, I'm assuming I could do that. The question is a similar question, I think, to a lot of people who've touched with Meta. They see the potential. They get excited by what could happen. The question is, where's the right timing? Right now, I feel like the only person who can say the timing is, is now is Jordan. He's the only one who's seeing all the pieces clearly enough. and so. And that's an issue too, because it's a funnel there that 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 um, that we all kind of need. And I and I'm not hearing enough from him. So I actually started to put together a list of all the projects I've thrown into the soup, and I'm waiting. And I think it's numbering in like nine or ten. Going, we could do things this way. We could do things this way. We could do things. I think all of these pieces are important. So now I'm going. I think maybe I need to make a map of all the pieces <laughs> and how they intersect with each other. You know, just to start to say, here's what my bridge is looking like. I haven't even built it yet. Here's what my, but here's what a bridge could maybe look like. And even then I don't think it's fully formed and don't even know if this helps, but right. so that's kind of where I've been sitting um, because we need to get it out of Jordan's head. And, and I'm, I'm not sure how to do that. I, I feel like we could just do that or, or I feel like it can just be done, I guess. Uh, without Jordan, so I, I've got I've got kind of a list like that. I I've got a list of my stuff, and then I've got a list also of stuff that I know of. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, right. And to and, me, that's what I want a tapestry like, to do, but we don't have it yet, and I don't feel like we yeah. can wait. I'm not sure yeah. we can wait. I would be I, very I interested a, in working on this, you know, with uh, with you, Pete, or anybody else who's interested in kind of going. I, I would love to. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the right platform is for it, but you would too. Yeah. I mean, one thing I wanted to mention was if, um, if you, if you visit the odious spreadsheet, spreadsheet, um, you will see that there's, um, a, a sort of an in progress 
sheet two and sheet three, which include uh, one of which at least includes this sort of all caps brain dump that um, that Jordan did while we were meeting and subsequent to, I mean, I, I had a conversation with Jordan the morning before the meeting where he like came up with all those categories of sort of existing sovereigns and needed sovereigns and that became the the vertical um uh you know the the the, the categories that are along the the x-axis um and um he also kind of summarized both um the the meta project um and uh in 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 jordanese um and then also said some stuff about how he saw the projects working in relation to the skills and and passions and it's in there and i i said to him look i feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this out of the spreadsheet itself. So the spreadsheet is just the people and the, and the, whatever they are, need slash sovereign slash um, categories. And, um, and I think this needs some development. And I mean, I honestly think it's sort of the seed of I don't know if it's the Lionsburg or the Meta Project, you know, kind of web page, primer, wiki. I don't know. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but to me, you know, it relates to the branding and description of what it is, what the hell we're all doing, um, and and getting it from like bracketed, slightly difficult to penetrate language to, to simpler language. Um, so I, I point you to that and, and also say that, you know, I, I'm moved to try and help make sense of that um, together. Um, and, and I think- What's the would... about the project page? Am I muted? Yeah, about the project is, is I think is... maybe, I've I've retyped some of it in not all caps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, it was it was a drag because I wasn't in something where I could say, oh, change case. Unfortunately, yeah. I had to retype the whole thing. But that's that's Jordan's language. Um and uh yeah. I mean, yeah. this is yeah. And then the earlier version, I see. And other earlier versions. What's WIP and WIP two? Uh, work in progress. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I know what WIP means. I just mean, what were they? Uh, Are they yeah. newer ones or older ones? Let's see. Um, let me just look here and see what's where. Sorry, right. I wasn't looking at the document as I was describing it. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I. I Work in progress two is the cleanest version of what just what um, uh, Jordan had typed, but um, gotcha. that's the about the project. But then there was another portion. Sorry, this is in another document. I'll have to pull it out. That was more about um, the the tasks. Um, yeah, uh, no, it's there. It's in WIP not whip two, where it's setting up the game, a starting point, and then it's step by step by step. Yeah, Is that well, what you mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I see it in yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, whip, just plain whip is, is Jordan's original typing on top of the spreadsheet. So yeah, that's, that's what cool. I was working from. Yeah, yeah. And so you ended up basically with kind of two things, if I'm hearing you right, Jordan's dump, right, for lack of a, it's a crude term, but for lack of a better term, right, his, his brain dump, and then the the mapping of the people's in passions and skills, right, for, for right. Uh, that came from the chat stream. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what came first was just the, and, and mm -hmm. that, that spreadsheet document had been shown initially the week before um, what came from, uh, from Jordan Wednesday morning was this, this brain dump into the previously existing spreadsheet. I mean, what you see there in the, the I guess it's fourth sheet, the yeah. whip sheet is what, hap what had happened by the end of uh, my conversation with Jordan. And then I pruned it to the people needs thing, which is what we shared at the Wednesday meeting. And, and you know, was in the process of separating out the, his brain dump into something else because it didn't yeah. seem like the spreadsheet was the place for the whole um, treatise, but you know, it, it definitely is an important thing and we want to put that in some form that people can consume. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, I um, when I look at this, I see two things, which I think you were echoing. One is something, you know, information that ends up on a website or ends up and, and um, helps to explain what the meta project is um, to the average person, something that can be shared by members of Meta Project to other people to help them know what's going on. Um, the step-by-step -step seem, or I guess these three things, step-by-step -step is visualizing to me as almost like a flow, right? We need to work on a flow of onboarding, of integrating, of connection, some, some that flows through people, some that throws through tools. That's what's forming in my mind and has been percolating for the last couple of weeks is this need for some sort of flow document to start creating the architecture, um, both technical and interpersonal. Um, and so that we can start to figure that piece out. I think that's really detailed and, and, and heavy work, you know, that's gonna um, potentially not just conceptual, but like actually what, you know, we'll start bringing out what we need to do and who needs to do it and what the roles are and stuff, um, which I've been reluctant to do on my own because I really want to, I think that's something that would be wise to do in, in a group of people. So his step-by-step -step to me is the beginning of that. Um, and I'm happy to work on that if that feels like that that's a priority. And then the last one is the, the spreadsheet of needs and stuff. I feel like we already have the, um, that could be easily integrated. It would be kind of manual, but I would be okay to do, I would be willing to do it where we take the profile side of the information and put and included in the um, Airtable profile side of um, what you know what's already been curated on the Airtable, and then take the project side of what's been shared and put it into the project. Connect the people and the projects together. So the first one being like Bill Anderson, and of course Massive Wikis. To me, that would be a connection from him to to the project of Massive Wikis, right? So to identify him as somebody who wants to work on Massive Wiki or is working on Massive Wiki. Um, we have both of those threads already established inside the sure. air table. So it would be easy to just echo it with this new information, yeah, um, that's yeah. not tapestry. That's just, you know, getting it in, into the place where we've already curated some other things so we can put them together into one place. If that, but again, like there's no point in doing all that work if we're not going to use the air table in some way, or if there's a different way that people want to see this. Right. So I'm, I'm looking well, for feedback from this group as to whether we think that that's the next right step together. I mean, one thing I would say to that is that I, I do think, and, and you know, I know Pete, Pete's initial reaction to this thing was this should be an air table and, and, and has pulled what the initial version of it into air table, um, which, and, and it should be in the air table stuff that, that is already done for sure. I mean, it, it definitely like pulling Sorry, so I guess there are sort of three pieces which I think I'm echoing what you were saying, um, Wendy, like there's, there's the profile which individuals want to feel some ability to show up and say, here's me and, and where that exists and whether they have to like, be comfortable in Airtable to give that or can give that on in whatever thing, whether it's Google Doc or not, um, or 
you know, we have a type form or something. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the best way, and that that's a whole, you know, conversation in itself. That super, you know, low barrier to entry, no barrier to entry way for somebody to show up and and self identify. Um, and then there's. Um, the list of projects, the list of what's now, you know, written across the top by Jordan, um, identified needs, you know, whether, whether what Jordan said is right or not, whether some of those things need to be combined, whether there are things that are missing. I mean, the list of, of, of projects and then how that matches up with the the people who might want to be involved with the with those projects that is a bit of a matchmaking job is a bit of an HR job is a bit of a self identification I want to work on this thing uh, yeah there's a there's a lot to be clarified about that then sorry I was saying that was three thing uh, there were three things that those three things were the <laughs> were the first well. There are those three things. Then separate from that, there's a sort of fourth and fifth thing, I guess, which is the, the explaining what the meta project is piece of, of you know, about, about the project, um, uh, Jordan's, you know, brain dump there. And then what you were identifying as the process that is in the steps piece of Jordan's Jordan's brain dump, which relates to those first three, like, you know, so how do we take the people, the needs, and like make them flow together as, as uh, sub projects? Yeah. I, I have a feeling like, like, you know, the, the past hour. Um, uh, I feel like we could get a, a lot farther. Seems, seems to me that the problem that we've got is we're trying to fit everything into the, a little bit, it's a little bit more than this, but we're trying to fit everything, all the coordination into the 90 minutes of a navigation call, mm. which turns into two hours, which turns into a little bit more than two hours. Um, I, if we, so I, in, in chat, you know, Most of these things overlap. Map weavers overlaps with skills and passions, which overlaps, and both of those overlap with the Lionsburg Wiki. There's a thing I don't know if you guys even know about called the Start Page Project, which is me and Eric and Jordan knows about it, to have a a, a guidance, you know, a one one start page where you could get, you know, into the flow of of Lionsburg and you know dispatch you to the right part of I need to know more about the project or I need you know the directory or I need whatever um, and then uh, uh, story sovereign which I don't know somebody here must be working with Wendy Elford on that right so story sovereign is kind of it also overlaps with that right it's like it is too. Um, taking the view that just like we need a start page, we also need um, an understanding of, of stories and story modeling and stuff like that. Um, and then there's social dimensions, uh, which I think maybe Michael, you don't know about, but, um, oh, cool. So yeah, part of it. social dimensions is chugging along too, yeah, trying to absolutely. solve things and resolve things and stuff like that. And then, you know, then there's maybe smaller things like <laughs> smaller and bigger, massive decentralization, my little project and massive coordination, which is going to be a project on top of massive decentralization. Um, so I feel like we're, we've, we've been doing a lot of work, but we haven't had enough meetings where we're just coordinating, right, this kind of stuff, because we could have we should be collapsing some of this stuff. Um, and then I, 
I can also kind of just see that, that there are, um, I don't mean that we need to all be doing the same thing or, or that we th need to throw out duplicates kind of, but we, but we should at least be coordinating the parallel projects or the close duplicates. Mm -hmm. So, um, so for instance, the start page, well, maybe that's a, a bad way to start. Map weavers and the skills and passions spreadsheet is kind of should be coalesced. Map weavers, what it's doing, and the Lionsburg wiki are probably like like close. They're they're siblings and they overlap some, but I think you want both of those. You want it. You want something that's very database oriented, and, and you want something that's kind of qualitative and hypergraph hyper hypertexty. Um, uh, story sovereign and social dimensions are kind of attempts at um, at um, actually maybe there's kind of a gradient from map weavers and catalyst to the Lionsburg wiki to stories um, where those things are all serving the same need kind of helping people understand it and sense making what we're doing but in different representations and and I guess I want to make sure that I'm not I, I I'm really not arguing that we want to do all those together like um, like we could have a wiki that does all of that um, that's the wrong way to do it or we could have a directory that does all of that and that's the wrong way to do it or we could have just stories and that's the wrong way to do it but we haven't been doing enough cross coordination between those projects to you know, say, hey, here's the stuff that we're representing in <clears throat> in Catalyst. Here's the the way that we're, you know, here's a similar set of things that we're we're representing in Massive Wiki and maybe a Profile Wiki or something like that. And here's how all of those things flow together and work together. Um, so, Kent, let me just share a screen, and I have to go soon, but I thought this would be useful. This is where I'm starting to think about maybe mapping some stuff. This isn't flow. This is just mapping. So before our brains go, okay, there's nothing about the stuff we're working on that sits in boxes. I'm just going to acknowledge that there's nothing about the stuff that we're working on sits in boxes. <laughs> Right, it's it's all interconnected. However, starting to understand a bit better the unique flavor of each one will help us do the discernment that I think will help us then communicate to each other. Hey, if you could work on this piece, I'll work on this piece. We'll come bring it back together, right? So to me, even though a, a, a view like this one makes it seem like everyone's working separate, it's also a spiral. It's also a little network, right? So I'm just trying to help parse it. Um, to me there, you know, again, I, there's a bunch of stuff I've been, I've been promoting. I was trying to use the pieces that I knew existed and going, okay, so where we've got a media piece where websites going to be built. We've got a social dimensions. It's really working on relationship dynamics. I was trying to start up something called the wisdom council, which is really trying to read the, read this read the field, read the community and, and communicate things from there back at, back to the community. We've got the infrastructure pieces of um, doing massive wiki, which is the way I understood it was a little bit of a knowledge repository kind of thing. Lionsburg's done a bunch of research on governance. And of course we have all the stuff that you've just done on structure, Pete, and I'm not, I wasn't sure what, what, what to name it. Then we've got the request to me, this is different. This, this is a, this is more about process and less about function. So this um, diagram came from a couple different sources. It's I created it, but it's it's based on a couple different sources. And really, it's about how we need to make sure we're always doing requests for guidance, right? Which is this path. How we're always doing process and program management, which is this path. How we're always putting what we're seeing from a meta perspective back out into the community, that's this path. I haven't seen this one really um, emerge yet. I think maybe this is where Wendy Elford kind of sits like, and I know um, Trey does some of this work too, where it's like you get these feedback loops, like you're, you're doing questionnaires on and surveys and stuff. So to me, this is one of those, it's a very tapestry kind of thing of way of thinking, because of course it's me. So I'm going, okay, how does it fit into frameworks that I know have already been created? How were we, the things that we've been, 
that have been emerging and have been starting to codify as sovereigns are fitting nicely actually into these things that have been codified by other people in the past. And it's also highlighting an area that's missing that we might wanna make sure we think about. So it, to me, both, oh, both of these things are doing that. I, I'm feeling, I'm in my mind starting to fill in all these sections. Now, whether we do it in this view or we do it in a chart view, it, it doesn't matter to me what it looks like, but I think there's value in starting to help people see where they sit and what, you know, and asking the question, sometimes we don't even know. We think we're doing everything having to, having to do with governance. And then when we start talking about realists, well, no, you have this flavor on governance and I have this flavor on governance. And so we can help to see where we're complementing each other and where we're duplicating work. Um, I, I'm just, yeah, I don't know if that helps. It's what I'm starting to play around with. Okay. I like it. Okay, I'm happy to so, share this Miro with everybody and we can collaborate on it if you wanna do Miro. Um, it, we don't have to though. I would, um, I would like to look at it. I don't know how much sure. I'll collaborate on it. Um, I, I wonder using your bridge metaphor, I wonder if, I, I feel like, let me try this. I'm, I'm tried it in my head, now I'll try it in speech. Um, I feel like we, we started seeing the meta project bridge getting built and it, there's a whole bunch of it that doesn't exist. But the folks on this call, I feel like we were, so one of the weird things about the meta project is everybody's in this different stage of, of feeling good about, you know, even, even talking about, you know, working together. There are people who are scared to death of talking about working together. They're, they're really early in that, that, you know, that thing. Um, there are people who actually need that bridge built before they can feel safe taking many steps, you know, on a creaky knot bridge yet. Then there are other folks who are a lot further ahead in feeling bridge-like. So the people on this call, I feel like we don't actually need the bridge or we can, we can each pretend that we're like a little drone and we can make a virtual bridge across and we can kind of see, you know, how you can hop from drone to drone to drone. And it's like, look, we're doing a bridge thing, <laughs> you know? Um, it's just like a bridge and everybody else is like, no, dude, it's not like a bridge that hop across looks terrifying. No, no, but... it is though. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, I, I feel like the thing that like we've been doing the drone thing and we're even doing it, you know, we're doing it in reasonable formation. Um, uh, but we haven't acknowledged that that can be part of, I feel like we haven't acknowledged that that can be the meta project too, because Jordan has been driving is the for, meta project. Yes. <laughs> driving it, Jordan has been driving, like we have to get the bridge built so that no. people can cross it. And it's like, eh, no. you know, let's just do it. I think we could do it. I think we can just do it. Yes, you know? I, I feel like if a couple of these patterns of processes of how we work together, could get smoothed out we'd actually already have the new thing that we need yeah. Yeah. and then if the focus again is on coordination i i, I think i'm going to start this is going to kind of be my mantra that's because it's really screaming <laughs> loudly in my head by now the the gift meta project can give is the coordination yeah right it's like a, a one analogy maybe this won't work but for me it's it's a it's a good analogy it's the parent, it's going to sound, I don't, yeah, I don't know if this is going to come off quite right, but the parent, I think the greatest gift a parent can give to a child is to remind the child where they've been, how they've gotten through something before and where they could go with it, right? It's that there's a coordination that happens when we say, here's where we've been. I'm going to remind you of your own story. I'm going to tell you where we're at right now. And I'm going to tell you where that could go. And then off you go again, right? Like then off I, you go to. I, I love that. And I like to add one more thing. Mm -hmm. um, here's where you could go and you have to decide. You get to decide and you have to decide. You have agency. You're the one that, exactly. that yeah. gets to decide. Which is why the parent goes. isn't quite right, <laughs> right? Because it, it kind of in, implies well, that if I, you don't do what I, for a lot of people that implies if you don't do what I'm at, suggesting you do, there's going to be a problem, <laughs> which it isn't. It's really an invitation, right? Here's one yep. option, right? Or yep. something. So it's, and, and to me, that's that loop. 
those are all the all those loops of process are really meant to help support that process. So each sovereign gets a visual of who they are. They get an opportunity to say, "This is what I'm working on." Oh, this is what you're working on. Oh, let me give let's give you some thoughts on that. Oh, okay. Now let's let's hear from you. Here's what we need to ask because we know it's we meta. We know what's going on across the board. So we need these questions answered right now. So we're going to put out a survey. We're going to hear back. So there and then we're going to report what we hear. We're going to report out to everybody so that you can make sense for yourself what your next right step is, knowing it's either aligned, starting to align more with Meta, or your choice, starting to go away from Meta. Both are fine, but you can't know that if we don't tell you what's going on. Then we have another one that says, hey, I have all new people, all new things. Welcome. We're going to do a little more onboarding. We're going to do a little more. Do you have an opportunity to do a little presentation or you have it rates all the new stuff? And we're back to, hey, report to us. Tell us what you're working on. And, we're back, and it just keeps going around. If these four functions have been identified repeatedly in many places, right, then not functions, processes, to me, it makes sense to make sure we're working those in so that we don't all go insane because otherwise it's just a bunch of sense making laying out there that's not drawing itself together. And then we're back to doing that same, those same processes, but we're doing them for ourselves as sovereigns. It's not being coordinated. So to me, it's that coordination piece. We're not taking away the action piece that resides with the sovereigns. We are going to, and we're not even taking away the coordination piece. We're just upping, we're, we're lifting the coordination piece to, to bring it around everyone. It, it's, a, it's a tall task. I don't, you know, I think our companies struggle at doing this all the time and they can tell people what to do. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of everybody fighting and nobody getting anything done. You do it, get it done. Right. And it will happen. So I think it, this is not, this is no small feat, um, but I keep, this is what's been patterning for me for the last. It's, it's the magic of it too. Yeah. And, yeah. and we're inventing a new way of doing it. Yes. Um, I think, you know, I think it's cool that. Evil that, can evil. <laughs> um, I think it's cool that we have Flotilla as a place for this conversation. Um, and, and it's funny and, and I think it's the right thing The flotilla doesn't really show up on the maps. <laughs> <laughs> Yet yeah. it will be subsumed eventually. <laughs> that, is really, that is really funny. <laughs> it's it's kind of like what, flotilla is, is, it's in a way it's, it's meta for the meta project or something like that. And, you know, it's like it wouldn't it's, show up on the mouse because it's like above the map or like below. But honestly, map. right now, this isn't flotilla. This is friends helping each other figure something <laughs> out that's hard. You know, that's yeah. what I see. That's, you or, know, which is very flotilla too. But to me, that's, yeah. we're not doing specifically flotilla things right now. We're friends who've gotten to know each other. We have deep connection with each other. We trust each other. We're sharing things that may be a little bit vulnerable. Like I was feeling this way or I was feeling that way. Or I'm thinking this thing yeah. that I wasn't, I wasn't willing to share in the large meta project yet, but it's really helped yeah. me to voice it here. Right. So thank you to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to my friends. I, I, I felt a little vulnerable bringing up the shit I was bringing up, but you know, um, so thank you. I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad we talked about this. Yeah, good job, all. I'm sorry, I, I'm gonna have to drop off. I have a meeting in 15 and I need to prep a bit for it. Um, for those of you who know Zeke. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm meeting up with him. He's really taking a lead in drawing together the, the people that have been surrounding him for a while and trying to coordinate it. So I'm trying to see, I'm actually trying to listen into what he's doing then set up a meeting with Jordan was interested in, in getting to know what, what they're up to. So I'm trying to create a bridge. So um, <laughs> I just thought you'd all be interested in that. So that's my meeting at three. I got to figure out, I got to get some food. My, so my well, main takeaway is we need more working sessions like this through the week, kind of, at least for a little while. Yeah. And, and my main takeaway is uh, maybe, it, it, and I would love some, from other people, like a yes for about this would be good is try to advocate for facilitation, more active facilitation um, on the Wednesday meetings so that there's more, like there's more of an intention for what we want to do with them. And there's more of an intention for what we want to get out of them. Not that I haven't enjoyed every single one because I have. It's more, yeah, I feel, I feel like we're not I have I have an adjacent one, which is I feel like we need to get we need to decide to get less done during uh, the navigation meetings. 
that's one way to right and then take all that work and 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 those are in other meetings is what you're yeah. thinking yeah and, but even then so there are facilitation there are, is a big part of that yeah and there are really really great ways to create connection between people too and so if that's the goal of the wednesday meetings um i mean i would be interested to see you know a reaction from from a group of people or even just from jordan on what process are we trying to establish in the you know in the Wednesday meetings, which one of those four, if we were to pick one, is the primary goal? Is it onboarding new people, right? Is it, and, and helping them hear and see what's going on? Is it feedback loops of hearing from the community what their biggest things are? What is it status updates? Is it communicating out? Is it all four? I kind of always saw it as we do one each week and we just rotate, you know, on the big meetings, um, but, that's not my call. I feel like it's not my call to make, you know, <laughs> but we've, we've um, got other, I think there's one or two more additional calls along with that call. So there's the Africa call and then maybe one more. Mm -hmm. So already we're, I'm well, so I, I think I, again, getting less done and doing it better and then mm -hmm. making sure that the stuff that we didn't get done there gets done other places. So we need to, that. we need to getting less calls. done and doing it better is then going <laughs> to be my mantra. I think that's smart. I really, really do because yeah. the slowing down to go faster kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And slowing down to get traction. Yeah. 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 Real um, you guys were going to yeah. talk about uh, in-person get together in New York. I don't know if you're going to do that. We'll, we'll have to do that on matter. We'll okay. Yeah. Love you guys. Bye. bye. I'm going to go get lunch. Okay. Stacy, you said something. Before Pete, before you go, I because yeah. like what you're saying about these working sessions, like why can't we just do it? Like why can't you just say it and we do it? Like I don't know. Like <laughs> book the time. Hey, Vincent. And, um, oh, sorry, Vincent. <laughs> uh uh no, no no reason yes yes basically yes um i don't mean that that we should do it and i and i i guess i you're, you're totally right um uh, i always watch people saying oh this is when this is a really good idea and we should do this and in my head it's like okay <laughs> you just volunteered to get it done <laughs> um yeah we should uh um uh, the the reason not to do it right at this very moment is because it's been a long call already. Basically, that, that's the only thing stopping me. Well, I guess um, I guess here's my question. I'm wondering why we don't designate like office hours, like regular scheduled office hours, and ask that like a representative from each of the overlapping calls be at those office hours. And then each, you know, it, and that would almost be like you could see the, how it works out <clears throat> that each of those sovereigns, basically, because they are each of those calls, if you think of them as a sovereign, can figure out how to make sure that at least some of them are there to coordinate and catch up with what they've done. And then we can um, tweak. Uh, so by working sessions, um, I don't mean, or maybe a different way to say that. Um, I, I think we're, um, when he said, when he was, when he made a really good, you know, what, what is, what is Jordan trying to accomplish with these calls? Um, it's a, I want to say failure, but I'm trying not to say it. <laughs> um, uh, it's, um, it, it's basically a, a maybe I can say this, it's a project management fault kind of to have a meeting without a purpose. So the meetings right now don't really have a good stated purpose. Um, and so they, and Jordan has got it in his head and maybe he said it in the, the email out before, you know, here's what I think is gonna happen on this call or here's kind of where I want it to go. Um, but I don't know what, I mean, I could maybe try to figure it out what it is. I think most of us don't know why we're on that call, what we're trying to accomplish, um, we didn't, you know, we didn't plan to accomplish stuff on the call. And so they're, they're mushy and stuff like that. The it's so 
maybe this is there's we have a tension in meta project about getting to know each other or hanging out and getting stuff done um and it's and it's funny to me that one of the another issue another issue going on is the whole masculine energy feminine energy thing or yin yang um uh and that meme has attached itself to the yeah, let's hang cool. out and let's get stuff done or yeah. you know let's let's figure out how we're doing stuff and let's just start doing stuff right um that they that map to me is a false friend kind of um uh but anyway um getting to know well, so maybe we do need getting to know you calls. Um, and those might be unstructured, but taking the, the, the two or three calls that we've got already and doing more of them is not what I want. <laughs> so by by working working session, it's like you could identify uh, you know that that list I had of projects. That are kind of kind of aligned. Map weavers, skills and passions, Lionsburg Wiki, start page project, um, uh, story sovereign, social dimensions, and decentralization. Those people, the people running those things, uh, should get together once in a while and say, "Hey, um, can we? So you know, how, what's what's the same thing and the different thing between the Wiki and Map weavers? You know, how can we help each other?" How can we make sure that we're not unnecessarily duplicating effort? How can, when we, when we are duplicating effort, how can we make it most productive for both, both of us, right? You know, uh, so, and, and an example of that, just to continue the, the thought in my head, not because you all need it, but um, there is going to be a Lionsburg Wiki. There is uh, a Catalyst. There's more or less a Lionsburg Wiki already. There is a, a Catalyst thing, you know, if somebody posts a profile in the Lionsburg Wiki, how does it end up in Catalyst? When somebody posts a profile in Catalyst, how does it get linked or how does it get copied over to the Lionsburg Wiki, right? And and more places than that. <clears throat> so that's the kind of, it, we, we kind of started doing that in today's call. Um, a lot of today's call was um, griping and moaning and, and and complaining because we were sad or frustrated or whatever, right? Um, but we at least identified projects that are kind of doing that drone virtual bridge thing. And and you, you know, we can start to talk about the lines that we need between them, the connections that we need between them. And um maybe a new thing for a, a new thing for me at least. Um being able to articulate the difference between that virtual kind of bridge that looks to some of us like a perfectly good bridge and to other people it looks like like air <laughs> and not a bridge being able to articulate the difference between that and a fully built out bridge and for the people coming in we've got people who are on on the Lionsburg calls the navigation calls who are going, okay, I see that you guys assert that there is a bridge and all I see is air. So what's up with that? And why am I even here? What's, what are we doing? You know. And then there's other people who kind of get the, the picture. Look, I can see the other end of the bridge is built, but there's no way to get there from here. And I, I don't know if I'm going to come to the next call because you guys don't know how to build bridges, right? So we've got this confusion about levels of competence, levels of maturity, levels of, of of doneness, you know, and ways of dealing with that and things like that, that we're really not articulating well, that we started to articulate a little bit in this call. So kinds of calls where we spend an hour or 90 minutes together talking about profiles or talking about skills and passions and how do you represent skills and passions in the wiki, um, uh, in uh, biweekly plex dispatch, in catalyst, and how do those, how do we not, I guess, you know, we're all kind of waiting. I think we've all been kind of waiting for, for Jordan to say, this needs to be done, but we don't, we really don't want to. I mean, we shouldn't, we shouldn't because we're, you know, we're bottlenecked already and it's just going to get worse, right? So to your answer or to your question, Stacey, we should just schedule some times to work together. 
Um, I think the right way to do that is to schedule working sessions with people, you know, who are interested in, I guess maybe this is a new thing for me too. Maybe it's cross project coordination stuff, you know? So, so we don't, we've been doing okay on map weavers calls or uh, wiki posse calls or things like that. The thing that we haven't had and the thing that I recognize today is we need to have calls that are across you know projects that are doing similar things but different things right wiki posse and start page and and map weavers should have another call for the, for all of those things together rather than just individual calls and maybe that's similar to when he when he kind of you know called out the meta project is the coordination layer for a bunch of sovereigns working together right yeah and I know this was a long call, so I'll let you go, but I just want to leave with the question of maybe everything doesn't have to have a goal. It blows my mind because that sounds completely wrong. I know, but I actually was thinking about this before well, when... I came here. So when I have more time to articulate it in a better way, it's really a worthwhile question to ask. And so I will, I, you know, yeah. I, the, there's, I, I, I totally agree. I, I love emergence. I love showing up for things and just watching what happens without a goal. But, but when Let's you're, when you're more space for it, cause I want to articulate it better. Cause I was just listening, listening. I can't think of the name, the name of the man who was just talking about it. He wrote a book called difficult conversations. He's a, Former, I think, former NFL football player, Aranu, Ar so I can't think of the name. He was speaking with Matthew McConaughey, and he was talking about how a goal is actually limiting. And I think there's something yeah. to that. Michael, you there's, muted. There's a, there's a whole interesting. So I, I totally agree. The goals aren't always needed. When you're trying to do something or when you're spending time, people's time and attention, if you don't at least have a goal of we're going to hang out together and this is how long we're going to hang out together so, so that it's a, a real common fault for people to say you know let's get together and see what happens you know um and but in the back of their mind i but i want this to happen you know if you want things to happen or if you're asking people to allocate time for you, then you kind of deserve to make a goal, even if the goal is we're just going to hang out for 60 minutes and see what emerges. And the other thing I wanted to say is, and maybe I'm an anomaly, but, and I don't want to drown, but <laughs> if I'm going to drown, I want to drown with you guys. So <laughs> I'll just uh, say that. <laughs> and, um, I, I, I agree. That's why we're all here, I think. All right. Nice spending time with you, but I'll let you Bye go. Eat now. <laughs> Bye. And I just put the um, link. Link up to the combo. And I Thank just you. put the link to um, Emmanuel Acho, who's the former NFL player who does uncomfortable really conversations with a black man. And, yeah, it was really interesting talk. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Cheers. Bye. Talk to you soon. Um, and Pete, I, I would like to connect with you one of these days. Um, you know. I'm going to kill the recording real quick first. Okay, sure.